In today's show, we're doing a mock draft in a points league, but it's an auction slash salary cap draft. Michael Bolton, he is a part of it. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's show is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit RockAuto.com and tell them that Locked On sent you. As I said, we're doing a Yahoo default points league auction mock draft. I'm going to be joined by Raphael Johnson of uh, NBC Sports Edge. He's going to be in that draft. Actually, Jared Johnson of uh, NBC Sports Edge is also going to be in the mock. He's not going to be on the show, but he's going to be a part of that mock draft. So we're going to be doing uh, doing that in this draft. But, uh, you yeah, know, so we don't interrupt the flow of the draft too much. I'm going to tell you that I wish that I had a Bilt Bar. Bilt Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever, and I've run out. I need some more. But these are the greatest tasting protein bar that you can find. Not only are they a delicious treat, but if you are looking to watch your weight and you take really care of what you're putting into your body, then Built Bar is the answer for you. Great flavors, raspberry, strawberry, also cookie dough chunk just got released. Go and grab yourself some of those, but these are not just delicious. They're healthy, 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories per bar, four to five grams of sugar and four to five grams of net carbs per bar. So a great nutritional profile to go along with that great taste. You can get these now for 15% off by getting them at Built.com. So head to Built com and use the promo code locked 15 to save 15 percent on built bar which is the best tasting protein bar ever if you're looking for parts for your car rock auto is the place for you to go why would you bother going to a local chain auto parts store to find those parts get charged more and get intimidating questioning at the same time that seems like a waste of everybody's time and money rockauto.com is a family business serving online do-it-yourselfers for the last 20 years whether it's brake parts tail lamps motor oil or even new carpet rock auto can help you out to get those parts for your car that you need. So go to rockauto.com and check out the expansive range that they have right for every, every car, every model, whatever, every make, whatever you need, Rock Auto has it for you. Rock Auto, amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Football is back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron. Teams are back to start another football season. And as always, BetOnline is your number one spot for pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be your number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. And don't forget to use promo code NFL100 to activate that. From football, basketball, boxing, or even your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. Apologies for, you know, doing, you know, uh, we have sponsors, of course, we have to make money. But I just decided we'd put all of them together at once to start the show, so that as we do this salary cap draft, we don't have to, we're not taking breaks for it. We're smashing all the way through. So apologies for for grouping three of those together. I don't like to do that, but um, got to got to do, help those guys out who help me out and help this show in general, and then also be able to provide probably another two hours straight of content here for you guys. So without further ado, let's bring in Raphael. Have a, have, a, have a chat to him and get this mock draft uh, underway. Here, here he is, Raphael Johnson. How are you? I'm doing well, Josh. Thanks for having me uh, as part of your uh, mock draft. It's good, good to have you here. This is the first auction slash, slash mm-hmm. salary cap draft that I am doing this season, so it's going to be fun. Uh, Raphael, for people who don't know you, yeah, tell, us, tell us about what you do, where, you, where you're from, what sort of stuff you've got going on. Um, I am based in Arizona. Um, my start in the right basketball writing kind of deal began with college basketball recruiting. Um, now I'm with NBC Sports Edge, um, doing more fancy NBA stuff, little college football, little NBA draft stuff in there as well. But 
Primarily NBA. Um, it's been a fun learning experience these last couple of years. You know, I haven't been in the game as much as some of you other guys have been in terms of writing about fantasy basketball. But I have been playing for a long time, so it's been fun to be involved with that. Uh, right now, we're running a promotion for all of our tools over at NBCSportsEdge.com, where you get 10% off if you use the code RAF10, R-A-P-H, and then the number 10. 10% off all tools. That includes draft guides, DFS stuff. I've won some money doing some football DFS using our optimizer tools. So, you know, it's a good opportunity. You know, there are different price ranges for whatever you may need. So feel free to check us out. Raf, I, I appreciate you coming on. This is going to be awesome to uh, to do this uh, salary um, your po- uh, points mock draft. Now, do you have a specific strategy that you want to divulge before you go into this mock draft of how you uh, approach these sort of drafts? Yeah, I think with salary cap drafts, my main thing is to set a price range. So what, what's in terms of individual players that you're targeting or you know how much you want to spend maximum on a player? Raf, your noise has, you've just completely muted. I don't know where you've gone. I have just lost. Uh, Raf, I'm going to pause this because you, uh, you've got no noise and we'll figure out what's going on. Technical difficulties solved. Raf is back. Now, Raf, tell us again your strategy on, uh, on auction, uh, auction drafts, salary cap drafts, how you're approaching this. Yeah, my, my strategy isn't too groundbreaking, to be honest with you. I think I'll have my targets in terms of certain players that I really want to have on my roster. Um, but I also attach a price range to them because I, I really value having a balanced roster. I know some people would go with two or three stars and then kind of fill out their roster that way. I try not to spend too much on one guy because I, I really want to have a roster with options, so to speak. You know, So you may not see me in there early for the superstars, but I like to try to clean up a little bit later towards the middle rounds where some guys may be a bit hurting in the money category. So. Yeah, that's the way I tend to uh, tend to approach it as well. But if too many people do that, then you have all, all just stand around holding your dicks and everyone's got too yeah. much money left <laughs> over and, and nothing's going on. Exactly. So sometimes you have to make uh, adjustments based on that. Um, yeah. Let's. I'm just trying to make sure we get everyone into this uh, into this draft. Just grabbing some names to to bring people in for people who sign up for mock drafts and then don't turn up, which is awesome. Always uh, appreciate that. When people do that, um, all right, so let's just get these last couple of guys set up. We're a couple of minutes away from starting uh, here, so we will hopefully get them in really soon before we kick this. Uh, it's a 12-team 12 12-team 12 with standard um, standard Yahoo scoring for this, uh, for this draft. So let's get back into this draft room with two minutes to go, and hopefully everyone gets in here before we start. Um, and yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm nominating at 10th. Do you, you're nominating first, so what you, you can tell us who you're going to nominate straight up. I'm just going to go with Nikola Jokic. Get yep. it out of the way. Yep, get, yeah, the money, get the money out there. Get get the money off the board. I think that's the best way yep. to approach this. Like, you don't need to muck around and try and get $2 off the board. Like, get get 60 bucks out. Get 70 bucks out of there. Yeah, no one likes the person that starts off a bidding for Nikola Jokic at, like, $2. No, nah, no. Nah, you got to Don't throw, be that guy. Throw, th- throw 40, 40 out there straight away. Yeah. I may even go 50. You yeah, know. he's not because he's not going front of 50. Um, all right, so we're yeah. still waiting on people to join here. I might have to pause this draft while we wait for these guys to come in, unfortunately, which is frustrating. Still got a minute and I've got four people still to um, get in. The frustrations are real. We're ready to go. This draft is off and running. Raf, nominate. Let's go. Raf, I don't know if you're talking about. I think your sound might have dropped out. We're having technical difficulties all over the place here. But we've got Nikola Jokic up for 50 bucks. And let's see how we go. Is anyone going to. Yeah, here we go. We've got a bid. Now, I'm looking at Jokic as like probably a $60 guy. Let's see what he ends up going for. In this points league draft, over sixty, I'm going to leave him alone. Raf still still bidding up. You got the average dollar there at seventy one. I would not be spending seventy one on uh, on Nikola Jokic. There, Raf, I don't know what's going on with your sound. I still cannot hear you. Um, 
might need to unplug those uh, headphones again after you make your bid. That's all right. I'll just keep talking. You, you can hear my voice exclusively for the next uh, two hours if we can't get Raf's numbers going. We'll get his mic going. Jared going ho- high in for 67 bucks for Jokic there. Whew. All right, let's get this money off the board, boys. 70. Come on, Jared, keep it going. Keep it rolling. I'm not bidding up that much. Yes, we are bidding all the way up. Great. Kento left the draft. Good for you, Kento. Here he He's back. Let's keep these bids going. All right, so here we go. Big Chungus, Nikola Jokic. He is off the board for $71. All right, Raf, if you're still there, I still can't hear you, so I'm not sure what's going on. Hopefully, you're back in soon. Um, Grant nominating someone now. Let's go, Grant. Who are you throwing out there? Let's throw the big boys out there. Remember, this is a points league, standard Yahoo points league mock draft. Joel Embiid. Whew. I would not be going over 50 for Embiid. Raf, you might be back. Are you there? Hello? Yes, you're Hello? back. I can hear you. Nice. I had to switch ports for some reason. Though. All right. Well, Raf, you're back. You missed out on Jokic. Are you getting in on the Embiid action here? Um, no, I'm with you on this. Because of the medical history, I can't go too high with Embiid. What are you like? While we're waiting for this Embiid bid to to go on, what, what are you making of the reports today about you know Kyrie Irving potentially not being vaccinated, therefore ruling him out of about forty three games this season if he doesn't get an exemption or doesn't get vaccinated? Are you taking that into consideration when drafting? I think you kind of have to, but the tough thing is, how do you figure out what's true and what isn't? Because a lot of this stuff, whether it's Kyrie or Andrew Wiggins. It's reports Mm -hmm. and, you know, not to, I'm not questioning the validity of anyone's work in terms of reporting, but a lot of smoke screens have been thrown up, whether it's for COVID or anything for that matter. So it's going to be a tough deal for fantasy managers to kind of figure out how to sit through all of that. But you get close, you get to about October. If you have a later fantasy draft, you're probably going to be at an advantage in terms of the information that you have. We've got Yan- to us doing it right now. Yeah, exactly. We've got Giannis going here. Now, I'm going to talk about Kyrie in a second. We've got Giannis getting uh, nominated right now. I think he is probably the bi- the highest guy that I would bid for. Um, as I say, if it goes for 60, I'll go. We're already over $60 there. So we're getting a ton of money off the board. The Kyrie thing's interesting. We've got these reports that he's not vaccinated. Of course, people would love to jump on Kyrie with any sort of um, conspiracy type theory. But also, he was sitting courtside at Staples Center three weeks ago or two weeks ago, mm-hmm. whatever it was. And part of the requirements at Staples Center to sit courtside, you need to be vaccinated fully vaccinated yep. and provide a negative test it's not one or the other to sit other places in staples it is one or the other to sit courtside specifically you need both now did he flaunt the rules did they just let him in otherwise you know even though he wasn't vaccinated i i don't know that's why i just don't know what to say like it's very easy to pile on Kyrie, but the rules say that he needed to be fully vaccinated to sit courtside he sat courtside and now the report saying he's unvaccinated i've got no idea so that's it is it is how lucky Kari might end up sliding a lot and he might be fine and play every game and you don't there's nothing to worry about there. So it's really, really hard to get a handle on that. Mm-hmm. Um Doncic is going here for high, a high price. I would have gone, yeah, for fifty five, fifty eight dollars. It's over sixty. I'm just very loath to spend over sixty on players. Um I know people will, will enjoy a stars and scrubs type method in a salary cap draft. I just it puts too many of your eggs in one basket in my mind, Raf. And I know you have that same sort of uh, strategy because if one of those guys gets hurt, you're screwed. You, you can't replace them with streaming or waiver wire guys. You you just can't. It's impossible. And if you are dealt with a bad schedule or a COVID, you know, um, a game gets suspended, which I don't think is going to happen really this year, but you, you're screwed because everything is put into like two top fifteen guys, three top twenty guys, and then everyone else they mm-hmm. can't make up that difference. Yeah. For that reason, I'm a bit surprised that Embiid for, went for as much as he did. Yep. His name was even thrown out there as early as it was. That That's kind of a surprise to me. I think $56 is a bit too much for him. You know, you'll get good production, but how many games is he going to miss? You know, so... The, th- the thing we look at is people love this stars and scrubs me- method, but very mm-hmm. much with a, a parallel to the NBA, in my opinion. Like, you look at the way the Lakers are built. Like, the maybe more last year. Like, Davis goes down and you just... You're done. Like Davis and LeBron are out. 
mm-hmm. and it, it, they they fell tremendously. And while it's not the exact same thing as fantasy bus, well, LeBron just goes for thirty eight, which is not not a bad price, probably a little high. Um, but those your two guys go down, and you you cannot replace them, and you're just going to free fall. Yep. And that's it's not always the the same parallel between real life basketball and fantasy, but that's that's the way that I approach it, and spreading that risk across. So replacing a twelve dollar player with a one dollar waiver wire guy is a lot better than placing a sixty dollar guy with a one dollar waiver guy, especially when you've got five other one dollar guys on your roster. Um, yeah, so mm-hmm. we're we're uh, on the on board the same way there. All right, Jimmy Harden. How worried are you about Harden and his hamstring this season? Um, hmm. A little bit, but not too much. I think he hasn't had the medical history of some other guys when we talk about multiple injuries, missing long periods of time. So I think he'll be okay. Um, getting that full off season, comparatively speaking, as opposed to the season prior, should help him out a little bit. So... I'm not too concerned about Harden personally. No, n- neither am I. Um, I'm not. He's he. You know, people are worried about that claim. Or he said, oh, "I'm still in rehab." I don't think that was anything to worry about. He is older, yeah. so that that increases your risk of soft t- tissue injuries for sure. But it's not really worrying me in terms of drafting him. He went for fifty eight dollars, which a lot of people are looking at that as, and saying a bit of a steal. I think it's probably about right. Maybe a little bit, maybe mm-hmm. two three dollars more than I'd be willing to spend. Now Steph at forty nine. Now that's getting into um, the territory of being not a bad uh, bargain. But he's nowhere near as good in a default points league graph as he is in a category league. Yeah, I agree with that. So I think that yeah. you know he's probably more of a $45 guy to me. And these average auction prices and projected prices here on the Yahoo board, they are more... Well, they're, they're across all drafts, category and points league, and it doesn't always hit across. So his average uh, auction value here is 66 bucks, and there's under no circumstance should you be spending $66 on Steph Curry in a, in a in a points league scenario. It's just it's not what you should do. Yeah, I agree with that. Um so he goes for fifty three. Jared's in there in the chat here saying uh wow that he's got I think it's too high for Steph personally. Do you think it's too high? Um I think it's about right. I wouldn't get into the to the mid sixties, but I, I wouldn't have too much of a problem spending fifty three on him if that's what you did. Anthony's team has made two picks already. He's gotten Steph and Embiid, so he's really leaning. He's got ninety-one dollars left for his remaining eleven players, so he's uh, he's going to be find it hard to get a few of these guys. He might get one more big big name guy, but he's uh, he's going to find be finding it tough. I think Shea Gildas Alexander up now, an interesting guy, of course, with the potential risk of resting at any sign of injury, which I, I don't think he'll sit when he's healthy, but. He will sit when there are risks. Um, and then Shea goes for $36 there as well, um, which is, I think, again, most of these prices have been probably four or five higher than I would have liked. That's why I'm not really getting in on them, but they're not outrageous to me. Yeah. Um, it's almost my time to nominate. In fact, we're getting... Oh, Porzingis. All right. So how... Are you in on Porzingis this year or are you out? I think he'll be improved. I just don't know how much money I'd be willing to commit towards having him on my roster. Yeah, like, I don't see him as a must-have type of play. I don't either, but uh, I think he's going to go under. I think he's like a $28, $29 dollar guy, and he's currently at 25 So I am bidding here, um, but I see, well, I see you're in here as well, bidding. Um, <laughs> yes. me, me, you, and Jared going for it. Uh, well, it's getting a bit too high for me. I might let you take that just to knock that 26 bucks out of your budget. I appreciate that. But that's a, that's not a, that's not a bad... Um, it's not a bad pick. Oh, my turn to nominate. Let's throw yes. old KD out there and let's just get him out there for 40 bucks. Get this thing cracking. I th- I've got KD, who again, is n- was not a top 10 points league guy last season. Um, yeah, I think that we're looking at him. If he goes for uh, 50, it's, it's, it's too much. It's just way too much in this sort of format, in, in my opinion. Um, he's staying at 44, so people are... Yeah. Ooh, I, yeah, I'm not getting in on this. I think he's already it's too high for my taste at the moment. You're going to end okay. up getting him here for 45. So your your idea of staying oh no, Ooh. Team BH jumps in. So your, idea <laughs> of, your idea of staying out of things until the end could have been ruined by getting two guys early. Not that they were necessarily yeah. all that high. All right, there you go. KD goes for 46. People will be screaming that that is too cheap. I just don't think it is. Again, he is not the same player in a category league, uh, points league than he is a category league. He was like fourth in points league, uh, category leagues and 12th in um, 
uh, 12th in point six. It is, a, it is a discrepancy. Jimmy Butler. All right, big Jim. Uh, yeah, okay. Whew. What do we do here? He's like a 40, 43, 44 fantasy point guy. 26 bucks. Yes, I'll get in on that. I think that he's like a mid 30-ish in my mind. That's where I'd be looking to go with him. There's still a few of us here that haven't spent any money. I think Miami's an interesting fantasy team just because of the addition of Kyle Lowry. I think the thing I've struggled with is how that's going to impact Bam out of bio. He's had the ball in his hands a lot. Um, how much does his fantasy value drop in your opinion? You bring a, a great point. People are getting, getting so high for Bam. Like, oh, I'll take him at the turn. I'll take him at pick 12 to 13. But me talking to Miami people, they just think the ball's going to be out of his hands. Like it's just going to be yeah. Lowry and Butler. And it, it used to be Butler and Bam. Because Kendrick Nunn's not a good passer mm-hmm. and not a guy that ran an offense, right? So I, I think it hurts him quite a bit, to be honest. And I think it's being probably under-discussed. But it seems like you're on the same uh, same wavelength as me here. Damian Lillard, another player who is significantly worse in points leagues than category leagues. And he has gone for way too high already, in my opinion. I would not spend mm-hmm. 40 bucks on Lillard in this scenario. And, he's, and that's great to get this money off the board. And I want one of these blokes who has not got a player to end up with him here. Because this is too much, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I'll just watch these guys go at it, you know, see how high they get. Yeah, and their that, price tag. Yeah, that 50 bucks is great. It's great for me to see a guy who I look at as a $38, $39 play go for 50. Like that's an extra $11 mm-hmm. off the board that really, really makes me feel better about holding on to guys. And then the way that I, you know, people know that the way that I always approach these auctions, and it is hard as I'm podcasting about it and doing a video on it to try and, you know, really lock into what I'm yeah. doing. It's, it's it makes it way harder um but you try and get like your yeah, 10 top 70 guys and no top 20 guys most likely is how i look at it townsy um he's probably the best guy left on the board to me um i like that price for him if he's under 45 i think i'm in oh it's you and me here is it all right all right so oh man 47 yeah. I might, I might leave that actually. Oh, it's over fifty. I'll leave that. Thanks. Yeah. These guys. I was good. comfortable with him at fifty, but anything higher. Yeah, I was probably going to sell it. Sell at forty-eight. I, yeah, he'll put up numbers, but I don't trust that roster, especially with the chaos going on over the last twenty-four hours. Ooh, yeah. So. So he goes for fifty three, Carl Anthony Towns, mm-hmm. decently high price. Nothing too, nothing too crazy, but also a little bit out of what I wanted yeah. to do. Um, who do you think's the best player left on the board? You can see the the top of the queue there, but I, I don't think that they're that's necessarily the order of the best guys still there. I think it's Paul George, um, and, and I know some people will not really agree with that because of you know, reputation or what have you. But he's coming off a really good postseason run. Oh, he was and awesome. they're also going to be without Kawhi Leonard. For, I, I think he's going to miss the entire regular season. Like, you know, given the, the past history of of them being really conservative with Kawhi's injuries and rehab, I don't think he's going to be back out on the court anytime soon. So I think that raises Paul George's value considerably. People will be looking at this and going, why is Darren Fox, who's got an average salary of 21, going for $35? Because he is significantly better in a points league. Now, I probably could have yeah. gone an extra couple of dollars there, but this is showing that everyone in this league is switched on. And yeah, mm-hmm. that projected salary of $18 is absolute garbage on Yahoo. He is much, yeah. much better than that. And here's the guy that I think is the best player left on the board, and that is okay. Zion. And I would happily go to 40 for him. Um, again, it's, it is it is a hard thing that these sites have to do in terms of putting out these ranks because they're going to try and thread a needle mm-hmm. between what's a category league and what's a points league. And in the end, they end up being bad for both. And that's why you need to be able to work out. Well, because it's impossible to do. Like you can't have De'Aaron Fox at fifty six when he's probably mm-hmm. a top fifteen points league guy. Like, yeah. eh, I think fifty six is too low for him in category leagues as well. But that's beside the point. It's impossible to be able to thread both of those needles. You, just, it, you can't do it and do it well. Grant, going for do I go Zion? Whoa. There's a lot of turmoil in New Orleans as well, overshadowed by the uh, Minnesota stuff yesterday, Raf. Yeah, that. The less said about Minnesota, the better. Um, you know, that I really don't know what they're going to do, like who they're ultimately going to hire as a lead executive. They've got an interim guy in there, obviously, but... 
Uh, I think it'll be him. It just all seems like a mess. I think it'll be yeah. Gupta. I think um, I think Gupta's going to be the guy. He's very, very highly regarded yeah. across the league. I think I mean, mm. they'd be pretty dumb not to give him the job, I think. Um, we'll see what they do, but that's the direction that I would think that they are, they are going on. Um, yeah. I still haven't got a player. Me and Ferris, we have not got players yet, <laughs> but that's fine. We're bidding. We're trying to get things. Jared has got three guys already. Luca, Shea, and De'Aaron Fox just loading up on point guards. Mm-hmm. Um, who else has got multiple? You've only got the one. Who else got multiple? Uh, Team BH has got Harden and Durant. Oh, he's gone full nets. Um, and who we got here? Derek White. All right. How how are you feeling about Derek White this season? Um, I think he'll bounce back so long as he stays healthy. But th- those Spurs guards have been pretty tough to figure out, I think, especially in, in points leagues. Um, I think White can give you really good value, but... I don't know. I, I I tend to want to stay away from those guys. I'm not sure who's going to get like the the lion share of the touches on a night in night out basis. I think White and Dejounte Murray are probably your safest bets, but I'm not too excited about anybody in that roster fantasy wise. To be honest with you, yeah, it's a weird roster. Um, and I've sort of I've just bit up Derek White, hoping someone else would grab in, and I'm not sure I want him for nineteen dollars. He's way better in a category league than, <laughs> than a points league. Nineteen dollars, yeah, I'm not that. I'm not super high on that. Um, yeah, but that's that's the risk you have when you're trying to bid up guys. Um, sometimes you can get mm-hmm. stuck with a player that, yeah, people might think. Um, Jared's asked me how much higher would I have gone? Uh, no higher <laughs> at all. Um, regretted that bid. All right, here he's much oh, Lamelo ball. Oh, I'm pretty big on Lamelo for this season. I think he's going to have a big step forward. He's a guy that I'd be happy to go to up to thirty bucks. It was already at thirty. Um, I agree. Uh, yeah, well, you're the one who bid him to 30. I think this is really good. Do I do I just do I push you up an extra dollar? No, I'll let you. I'll let you go. I appreciate that. But yeah, I think he's going to be excellent this year. They got Devonte Graham moved to New Orleans. He was already going to be the starting point guard, but now you've got one less guy to split up primary ball handling responsibilities with. Gordon Hayward's back. I think Lamelo's going to be even better this year than he was last year. He played 29 minutes a game last year, Lamelo Ball. Yeah, like it's going up. I don't. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter if he improves oh, yeah. per minute. Like it's the minutes are going up. Like that's your number one thing. Sabonis. So I've heard people want to take Sabonis at the end of the first round. I don't think yeah, that's in a, you know, obviously a snake format. Uh, I don't think that's correct. Mm-hmm. But this is about the right area for him. How worried about Rick Carlisle are you in terms of the way that Carlisle slows things down in general? You know, I think I'm a bit more concerned about Miles Turner. Like, I know Turner can get you value in terms of block shots. I'm definitely um, concerned his three-point shooting has come along a little bit. But, yeah, when you, you slow down the pace, that means fewer touches. And that was always a delicate, delicate balance between Sabonis and Turner. I trust Rick Carlisle a bit more than Nate Bjorkman, who they had in there last year. Uh, I shouldn't say a bit more. That's a lot more. But... You know, it's going to be interesting to see there. Like, I don't think I would be going mid thirties for Sabonis personally. No, I'm I'm a bit worried about what because it's a new coach and Carlisle just they, they don't run transition at all, um, so mm-hmm. it slows things down a bit. And Bjorkman ran things pretty fast last season. Not that he did things well, but he ran it fast. Um, Tatum probably one of the best guys left here on the board. Oh, he's already gone to forty five. That is whew, okay. That's high. Um, if we have a look at you know comparing that to, he, he's going the same price as Zion, um, Durant, um, higher than Town or no, he's a bit less than Towns. Forty five is oh that's that's high. Chris Paul, who <laughs> um, not not as good in a points league, um, significantly worse. In fact, I uh, he's got that average price there at thirty one. I wouldn't go anywhere near that for Chris Paul, not even remotely close. I think this is actually, you know, people have switched on here. That This is about the right price. It's $21, $22. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, it's why you be, be really careful of these projected numbers because they, mm-hmm. they, are, they could mislead you. Oh, here we go. Will people be scared of Kyrie? I, Kyrie also <laughs> significantly worse in a points league compared to category leagues. He was fifth, fifth or sixth, I think, in a category league last year. And he was like 19th, I think, in a Yahoo points league. I think with Kyrie, given the recent reports, if you're in a league with people that you know, 
you may want to try to float some of those so-called news reports as like a smoke screen mm. and maybe you can nick them for a cheaper price to be honest with you yeah because like we were talking about earlier i'm not sure how true any of that is but you know for someone who's on their toes it may be a good opportunity to get him at a, a steal a bargain price yep agree um it, it might be true it might not be true but people are very they're willing to believe it about Kyrie more than they are with everybody uh with anybody else yeah. i think so um <laughs> you can easily you know if it turns out to not be true then there might be some pretty good value there all right i just threw out anthony davis who i think is going to struggle to get his rebound numbers back up playing alongside russell westbrook it's really hard oh. to figure out that team <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know how to figure out what's going to happen there is westbrook just going to take a complete step back i, I don't know what is Davis? I don't know. Davis was bad, irrespective of injuries. Well, season, not bad. Bad compared to his usual performance. Yeah. Um, couldn't hit free throws, couldn't hit field goals, couldn't get rebounds, blocks dropped off. Everything was off for him. That could easily all come back, Raph, but uh, I don't want to mm-hmm. trust it. I think with him, the shortened offseason was a real negative. Has Just because of the medical history, he's one of those guys that at this point, I think you would say he needs a full off season. Um, so maybe you got that with him getting bounced in the first round and maybe he bounces back this season. Yeah, I, I think look, there's a huge chance that he bounces back. The injury risk is always going to be there. But this is something yes. that I always, always talk about with Davis is prior to last season, he had four healthy seasons in a row, right? He mm-hmm. had two 75 game years in New Orleans. He had the one where he sat out due to the trade issue at the end where the Pelicans said don't play. And then he had this first season in LA where he, he played what, you know, 62 out of the 72 games or whatever it was. Like he's had, yeah, yeah you play, if you miss 10 games, that's healthy in an NBA season. Uh, mm-hmm. He played four of those in a row. So he's not, a guy, people look at Lasha guard, oh my God, that was terrible. But four years in a row, like how, I don't know how to sort of gauge that. And, but the re- reputations yeah. are really hard to shake, Raph. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. What are we doing here? Jared is claiming that Davis went for too cheap. And I think that's a possibility for sure. The worry I have is yeah. the Westbrook impact. Um, and you know, if he stays at seven rebounds instead of 10 rebounds, that's a big chunk of value dropped off right there. Who we got here? Nikola Vucevic. Why are we bidding $4 on this guy? Yeah, that's probably a little low. Let's throw, <laughs> let's throw a 21 out there. I think that he is 30 plus. Um, his average price is like 46. That's too high. But I'm happy to go into the 30s here for him. I can get him mid 30s. Yeah. That's... Well, you and me are going to be fighting here, I think. Oh, okay. No, come on. What are you doing? <laughs> do I do I push it? Another one? No, you can have it. All right, thank you. Ooh. Jeff, wow, that team BH <laughs> has got thirty-four dollars for nine spots. He's got Harden, Paul, Durant, and Davis. Uh, yeah, that is a that, that's a risky team to have spent that much money on. I, I would think. Yeah. Trey Young, they've started him off at forty. I would not have bid forty on him at all. So you, someone else can have that. Jared's just throwing <laughs> forty out there, and no one's going to bid. That is the that is the risk, <laughs> Jared. He's going to have even less. Wow, he's down to 27 <laughs> Oh, Jared. Oh, my God. So, Jared's got Doncic, Gilgis, Alexander, Fox, and Young, and he's got $27 <laughs> left for nine players, and he threw $40 out in Trey, and no, no one else bid on him. Oh, God. All right, so you're throwing out Paul George. Um, yeah. Let's see if there's any value here in Paulie. I reckon there is. I'm with you. I think he's going to have a pretty big season. People hate Paul George. He's one of those players that's easy to hate on and, and they misconstrue narratives on him literally all the yeah. time. Uh, I had someone trying to argue with me, Raf, as we're bidding and trying to chat here, saying you can't draft Paul George because he always lets you down, whether it's real life playoffs or fantasy playoffs. And I went, oh, God, he, um, do- he doesn't choke no. under the pressure of fantasy playoffs. Like that is not a thing that happens. Not to mention the fact yeah, that I don't... He was shit last year at the end of the season, know. but that is just a wild thing that people are just willing to believe because they hate Paul George. Yeah, I don't think the players themselves really focus on <laughs> fantasy players. Yeah, you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> but I literally had this argument. And then yeah, you go back through the past years, 
And he was like the fifth ranked player over the last two months and the fourth ranked and the eighth ranked. And then last year, he was bad in that time. But to say that he chokes and doesn't isn't reliable in fantasy playoffs is just one of those wild things that you have to take psychology of people playing fantasy into consideration and use it to your <laughs> advantage because that is a, it's a crazy thing to think, but people literally think it. Yeah. Paul George goes for 39. Yeah, it's a pretty good price. I think that's a pretty good spot mm-hmm. for him. Um Bradley Beal still out there. He's the best player left on the board. His average price is $46. Um, I think that's too high, but he is going to get a spike in usage. He allegedly thinks he's going to shoot more threes, although his three-point shooting fell way off last season. It was pretty poor, and his volume of threes dropped way off. He claims he's going to do more of it, but who knows? But he's out, out now. I would happily go to about 40 here for Beal, and we are firing mm-hmm. way up. Let's see. I've got him at 38 at the moment. Ooh, all right, Grant's gone to 40. Do I... I'll do 41. I'll stop at that, I think. Ooh, and Yeti's going to I think I'm actually watching his assist numbers this season, to be honest with you. They should go um, up, shouldn't they? Yeah. With Westbrook out of the picture, you know, I know that Spencer Dinwiddie will be there, but Spencer's never really been a great fantasy player in my view. You know, he's had some good seasons, but in terms of fantasy value, I haven't really seen, like, jump off the page numbers from him. So I think Beal's going to be in for a really big year in Washington. In a points league, I can see Dinwiddie being 40, 50 spots better than what he is in a category league. But in a category yeah. league, no threes, no steals, no rebounds, no blocks, bad mm-hmm. field goals, bad free throws. Like it's just, he's like a two category player. In points leagues, it's yeah. fine. Um, but in a uh, in a category, league, he gets significantly overrated in my opinion, even though his minutes and usage will definitely go up. Uh, Julius Randle. That's why we, why are we so low on Randle here. Do you think that how much do you think Randall's going to drop considering uh, Kemba and Fournier are there? I don't think he's going to drop too much. Um, I think Kemba's going to be part of a almost like a platoon at the point between him and Derrick Rose because the medical histories, you know, recently with Kemba's knee and then Derrick Rose. I don't think I know Tibbs has that rep of running guys into the ground, but I don't think that's going to happen with this team because they really can't afford to do that. So. I don't think Randall's going to be hurt too much. Now, he may not have the ball in his hands much to attack defenses directly, but it's not like he's going to become option number three in their offense. I think he's still the number one guy for them. I agree that he's still the number one guy, but there's a, there has to be some sort of a hit when you're replacing Alfred Payton with Kemba Walker and when you're replacing Reggie Bullock with Ivan Fournier. Like, mm-hmm. There has to be some sort of hit, but he might offset that by shooting the ball better because his percentages, yeah. his field goal percentage was rough at the end of last season. Like It was quite poor mm-hmm. because he was taking on such a large load. I, I don't think that we'll see... You know, I don't think we'll see Kemba play under 30 minutes a night. Some people seem to think okay. he'll play like 25 minutes and Rose will play that and then quickly will play 25. I, I don't see that. But he does have other options at point guard there. You're right. To uh, to you know, keep... Oh, Kemba won't play the, the RJ Barrett 38-minute-a-night diet. You won't get that. I feel pretty confident yeah. in saying that. Mm-hmm. All right. So we've got someone that's dropped out of the draft. Awesome. And now they're on an auto, auto bid, but that's, that's all right. Sometimes that shit happens. I don't know what happened to him there. Yeah. Um... And let's see where they're, where this auto person... Russell Westbrook. Still a much better points league guy than category league guy. Um, Raf, $35 is $40 projected salary. That's too high. Um, I still think he's going to be pretty good on this Lakers team, but he took a gigantic step back in usage when he played, uh, played with Harden in Houston, and that probably mm-hmm. happens again now. Do you think he averages a triple yeah. double? I don't think he'll average a triple-double, but what I would say in his favor is that they may be able to buy LeBron and Anthony Davis a little extra rest with Russell Westbrook in the the flow because he's never been a guy to throttle down. You know, load management. If he sits, he's legitimately hurt. So they may be able to kind of siphon some minutes off of LeBron and Davis just because they've got Russell Westbrook to just go all out, you know, whenever he's on the floor. So... I'm not too worried about him. I think, if anything, you just want to see those percentages, especially from the field, kind of improve a bit. I'm not expecting much from a three-point shooter, but the field and the foul line is where you really want to see some improvement from him. 
his MVP season where he shot like 38% from three is one of the biggest statistical outliers I think that we've ever seen. It just came out of, <laughs> came out of nowhere and then all of a sudden it just dropped straight back off. And the fact that he yeah. can't hit free throws anymore is uh, absolutely confusing. Zach Levine, not mm-hmm. as good in points league as category league. A lot of his value in category league is devo- de- derived from having such high efficiency on high volume and that doesn't really matter as much in a points league setting. He's still valuable, but... He's going to take somewhat of a hit with DeRozan in a full season of Vooch, you would imagine. I don't mind him at that price. He's at 24 bucks at the moment. Um, yeah. Do you still think he is the number one guy, though, on that team? I think he is. Um, he's been there the whole time. I, I think I would assume that they look at him as the franchise cornerstone. Yep. Whether or not he can fully fill that role for like a, a title contender in time, I don't know, but... I think he's there. Going to, he's going to be Chicago's number one guy. I don't think DeRozan's going to hurt him too much. Um, Vucevic, they seem to establish some sort of chemistry later in the season, even though they they weren't all that successful as a team. So, I'm not too worried about Levine, my personally. I'm not all that worried about it. Look, there, much like we talked about with Julius Randle, there'll be some sort of a hit. There has to be when you're replacing, yeah. you know, when you're adding DeRozan and a full season of Vooch compared to Wendell mm-hmm. Carter Jr. and Ryan archer Jackano, or whoever else was playing those minutes. But, yeah, he's not going to you know, all of a sudden fall way off. Uh, Devin Booker up here. Do you think Booker can improve on what was a little bit of a disappointing season from a fantasy perspective last season? I, I say no. Just because Chris Paul is back. That was the biggest reason why he took oh, the absolutely. hit. You know, not having the ball in his hands as much to be a playmaker. Um, or his, I think his assists were halved from the season prior. He's averaged like six and a half per game before Chris Paul arrived. And it, that dropped considerably. So losing out on that, I think that's the biggest issue for Booker. I think he should get back into the top 50, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did it. One of the other things that weirdly happened with him is he was like a 93% free throw shooter. Not weirdly, because that's extraordinarily mm-hmm. high. And he went to like 88, right? And I, I say this yeah. all the time on the show. So like if you're outlier, unbelievably good, like a 46% three-point shooter, you average three and a half blocks, you, you hit 94% of your free throws, you can go from being unbelievable to being very, very good, and it's still a gigantic mm-hmm. hit. So he goes from 93 to 88, and 88 is still great, but it's not 93. And it'd be the same as you going from 80 to 75. And you went from 80 to 75. You go, oh, shit, you've yeah. gone from good to bad. But you mm-hmm. go to 88 and go, that's still great. But it, it cuts so much out of it. And you're right. The Chris Paul situation, you hurt his assist a lot. Now, I think the free throws might be able to come back up. But if Paul gets hurt, then Booker does get a huge boost. So I think some of it yeah. is like, you know, couching some of his value by going, well, I'll, I'll take him. Can't be worse than last year, but there is a chance that Paul misses more than two games, which is what he did this last mm-hmm. season. Uh, Donovan Mitchell up here. Uh, Mitchell obviously elevated his game again in the playoffs. Do you think he can sustain that for 82? I do. You know, so long as he stays healthy, I think he's well on his way to being a superstar, uh, being a really good fantasy player as well. So, yeah, I expect him to really sustain what he did in the playoffs and, and throughout the regular season when he was healthy too. Yeah, he, he had his best fantasy season last year. He upped his um, uh, free throw rate, which is super important for his scoring. Um, I, you know, I think that's almost floor where he was last year. I think he's going to improve again. And if he was a top 20 player this year, I, I don't think it should be a real shock to anybody. Uh, realistically, I think he can be uh, that good. I'm going to try and get him here for 33 bucks. Let's see if anyone bids me up. I'll be happy to get him there. Please, everyone can leave him, including... Oh, who's this bloke? <sighs> <laughs> My guy. Uh, all right, let's throw thirty-five. I got the. I got a bit of money here. Ferris still hasn't uh, g- grabbed anybody. I reckon I might get Don here for thirty-five. Oh, all right, thirty-six. You can have him. But Mitchell average salary thirty-one. He's worth more than that, in my opinion. So that's yeah. one of those ones that you can target as a cheaper guy. But I'll let Zach have him there for. I don't know if that's actually Zach. No, it's this Ferrovar, or it could be Zach. Who knows? People's names have changed all the time. Mitchell Robinson. Whew. Um, terrible points league guy. Uh, I wouldn't want him for more than a couple of bucks, I would think. Don't know why people are throwing him out there this early. He's not going to take a huge amount off the board. And they, yeah, his foot still not 100% right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this I'm is more great. excited this is about Nerlens Noel than Mitchell Robinson, to that's be honest with you. That's way too much for Robinson in this format. I, it's way too much. Mm. He's not a points league guy. He's like a $2 points league player. He's not... That, that's too much. But, yeah, that's good. We get that money off the board. Um, who's up here? 
Maga Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. Um, big breakout opportunity. And then there is the vaccine hesitancy question that seems to be surrounding him as well. Now, he doesn't play in New York or San Francisco, which would cost him 41 games if that was the case. But there's still more of a risk of missing time due to um, uh, the what, yeah, uh, protocols. That's the word I'm looking for. 20 yeah. bucks, I think, is about right for him. Again, a guy that shot amazingly from three. And if that drops from 44% to 40%, it's still good, but it's not as good. Um, and that drops his scoring and overall three-point production down a, a little bit. My turn to nominate. Let's throw out the guy we talked about earlier, Bam Adebayo, and let's see if people will buy into that perceived hype on him. Uh, average salary of 36. I would not spend over 30 for him. But maybe I don't even need to spend that much if people aren't going to throw that much out there. Chris. I don't think I'd go past 25, personally. I uh, don't believe... No, I'll probably go to 28... Uh, things are picking up now, so no one's really bidding up for him. There is a huge risk, I think, with Bam this season um, because of that Lowry factor. Now, if Lowry comes in and gets hurt and misses 30 games, then it's a complete non-factor. But yeah. we don't know that. So he's gone up to 26 bucks here. That average of 36, I'd love for someone to push him up all the way up to there. That'd be great. Don't think they will. Yeah, he's probably getting out of my price range here. 29. Yeah, up to... Yeah, 29 bucks. That's probably a little high for me for Adebayo with that risk built in, I think. Mm. And he's not he's not as good of a points league guy again than a uh, category league player. Bam goes for 29 in the end. Um, Who is sitting around here now? This is probably... Yeah. Van Vliet's a risk to get overspent on, I think. Again, probably not quite as good as a points league guy. But he's going to improve on what he did last year, would be my guess. Mm. Rudy Gobert. All right. Happily go Gobert here. What's Gobert's our average? 33 bucks. It's too high, but mid to high 20s. I don't really see much changing for Gobert this year versus what he did last season, Ruff. Yeah. I know people were, some were talking about maybe he'll get more post-up opportunities like he did in the Olympics. But Utah really doesn't use them that way. No, so they don't need to. I don't, you know, I don't expect anything to change. I think you're just going to get the same blocks, rebounds, and, and dunks that he normally provides. Yeah, there's there's no need for them to do that. Like, why would they say, well, let's get the ball out of Ingles, Bogdanovic, mm-hmm. Mitchell, Conley, Clarkson's hands so that Gobert can do post ups? So there's no need to do that. What they're doing works. Now, if he were a better, if he were a better interior passer, mm-hmm. you know, to get some of their three point shooters clean looks then I could see it but he, he doesn't really give them that much in that area so why would they do it yeah exactly like he just do what he does clean up get these 12 13 14 points whatever it is um, block your shots grab a lot of rebounds finish efficiently and that's, that's what he does 30 bucks I think that's probably about the right area for him still got Ferris who has not been on a player yet uh, what about this uh, <laughs> this new sage Kyrie he's got six blokes and he's got 14 dollars left Kyrie, Westbrook, Porter, Giannis, Bam, and Mitch Robinson. That's a guy who's dropped out, so thanks for doing that. Really appreciate you dropping out of the draft. But that he's going to find it hard to fill the rest of that roster out. All right, Freddie Van Vliet. Um, all right. Probably looking mid-20s here. We're already up to that price as we go along. People have still got money that they're throwing around. I'll go to 27 on Van Vliet. What's your roster looking like, Raph, as I just work out if I'm bidding here on, on Van Vliet? Yeah. Well, uh, so far, I've got LaMelo Ball, Devin Booker, Kristaps Porzingis, and Nikola Vucevic. So four players, like $80 left to spend. All right, so you got... And bit- it's my turn to nominate someone, too. All right, throw... Who are you going to so, throw? I'm going with Miles Turner. It's a good one. Much worse points league guy than category league player. See if the people in this so draft realize that. We'll start at $10. I wouldn't go too much more than that, to be honest. I was hoping that everyone else would agree with you there. You're going to go to 12? I will go to 12. I'm thinking 15 max for Miles Turner here. I think that's probably too much, personally. He's just not... And I won't have to do that. (laughs) What'd you get him for? 12 bucks. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty good.
All right, so we've got people debating strategy here in the chat. <laughs> they're, uh, they're telling us that our strategy is the worst strategy, Raf. Christian yeah. Wood. I think there's a lot of value here. It's a, he's an easy. Yeah, he's projected at 25, 26. I think that's about right for him. Um, let's see how far people bid him up. The John Wall news, I think, is pretty good for him. Um, mm -hmm. It just gives him more shots, really. And yeah, everyone else more shots too, but it, it does help Christian Wood there. Um, he was really shit after hurting his ankle last season. I'm not worried about that carrying over that much. Yeah. I think, if anything, I'm interested to see what the numbers on Kevin Porter Jr. are in terms of what his bids will be. Yeah. Because I think he's the one who's going to benefit the most from John Wall being moved on. Oh, 100%. You know what? He's going to be the guy that I throw out now. When it gets to um, when it gets to my nomination, it's just because he's got an average price of like six bucks, or projected six dollars, which is obviously really low. And we'll see. Yeah, that that's you get him for six dollars. That's a steal. Jaron Jackson again, a worse points league guy than category league player. His projections at twenty one bucks here. Um, I think that. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd go that high. Let's see if people are hesitant if they got burnt by Jaron last season that they're going to be hesitant to draft him this year. I'm I'm not. Are you? I'm not because he's healthy. Yeah, you know, he, exactly. he wasn't healthy. And he, talking about a young player with a knee injury, you know that a team's going to you know, take their time with him, be conservative with the, the return the return process. So, yes, especially. Yeah, I'm not too worried about him at all. All right, I'm getting in on this here. I'm at 14 bucks sitting there. Let's see if we can let me get this bid in. Oh, don't tell me. I'm going to get another player. Oh, yeah, there we go. Jaron Jackson for 14. I'm okay with that. Pretty happy with that, actually. I think that's some nice value. Yeah, that's... Again, not as good. And I think the other thing is that Valanciunas is, is out of there. Mm. They got Steven Adams now, but he does, he's not as big of a threat offensively as Valanciunas was, so... Nope, and I don't think no Adams. Reason. I don't think Adams is going to play as much as what Valanciunas did. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I just see new Sage Kyrie just rejoined the draft, and he's logging back in to see that he's got fourteen dollars left for seven players. So that should be fun. DeAndre Ayton, he th he throws out there. Um, again, the the narrative last season, uh, I think a bit raff was well, DeAndre Ayton's going to take a step forward because now instead of Isaiah Kanan throwing him passes, Chris Paul's going to be throwing him passes. So everything's going to mm -hmm. go up, and that just didn't happen. So you know, we, we have these narratives so often that we try and put on to players like the Kemba Walker in Boston. Well, now he goes to a team with better players, so his efficiency definitely improves. And it, it's not the case. And that Aiton got worse with Chris Paul there. So it's not always the way that, that we expect it to go. I do think that he can improve a bit from where he was last season. I'm not sure if he's fully uh, fully playoff um, playoff Aiton, but... If he or, or if he is a uh, a guy that's you know, more going to regress back to regular season, but I think he only played thirty one minutes a night last season, and I think that should be going up. Mm -hmm. I think with Aiden, while his fantasy value didn't improve, his his actual value did in yep. terms of being a winning type guy. So that's kind of the split that you can have with some of these players. But like you said, with the narratives, the key is to make sure that. We're keeping those two things separate because, you know, a guy can be a fantasy stud, but not really help you in terms of actual winning. I think Aiton kind of went in the opposite direction last season. I just ended up with DeAndre Aiton there for $21. That's okay. I think that's you know, decent enough value. So that gives me three players now. So we've got a disagreement um, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> in the chat there. Ferris is, is left his run late, but there's still plenty of value out there that he can... Uh, he, I think he's going to end up with a pretty strong team, to be honest. It takes some uh, yeah. balls to wait that long. Mm -hmm. But it can work out. Now, there, there's, a, there's a tipping point if you wait too long. I better look at this Gordon Haywood one because that is too cheap for Gordon, I think. Um, he gets hurt in weird ways all the time. Are you discounting him significantly because of that? Um, no, I, I just put in a bid for $13 from it. Yeah, fact, and I, and I'm going to bid you up for 14 because I, I, uh, I yeah. agree. I think he's, yeah, he's, if you can get him for mid teens, I, I think you're, you're bordering on a steal there. Yeah, 
He was remember how good he was last year? Or someone just got him for fourteen. Oh yeah. Oh me, Jesus Christ. You did. Wow. <laughs> Josh, great bidding. <laughs> this is what happens yeah. when you're trying to talk and work out stuff that yeah, I'm happy to get him for fourteen. To me, he's more of like yeah. a like a twenty dollar guy, eighteen dollar guy, yeah. or at least on a per game basis. The injury probably drops him down, but I get five dollars there, I'm happy with that. Um all right, so I'm starting to fill my roster out now. White, Haywood, Jackson, Aiton is my four guys, and I have $130 left for nine more players. So, you know, I obviously yeah. started Thanks. slow and starting to bring some guys in now. OG Ananobi, a lot of hype. What was that? Sorry? I think you're in a pretty good spot financially. Mm. You know, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with my position here. Obviously, Ferris can outbid me and Yeti's got a lot of money left and Black Mumba's got quite a bit of cash left as well. So I can't just bid on whoever I want, but I'm in a pretty good spot. Ananobi, a worse points league guy than category league guy. Um, I think he's yeah, that average, that projected salary of 23 is too high in a points format to me, but the average is probably too low. So he's sort of sitting in the middle there. Yeah, I think the Siakam injury is going to push him up a little higher than he probably should be, to be honest with you. Siakam's a guy that goes for, uh, t- tends to go for a lot less than what he would, obviously, if he was healthy. Now, if he misses 15 games, you might be getting him for like yeah. eight, bu- eight bucks, and there's so much value in oh, that. Yeah. I got him. You know, You're talking I, about November. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he should Terms be back in November. I got him at pick 91 yeah. in a snake draft the other day. Okay. Wow. Um, like I wouldn't take him in the top fifty, but at ninety one, he misses a month, and then I've got a top forty guy yeah. for the other five months. Like mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. But it's, so he's a guy that is sliding a lot now. I tend to be really careful about drafting guys coming into the season injured, but it's not a lower body injury. I feel confident that he's going to be back on that time frame, and he's not going to have to work his way in and play significantly limited minutes for a long period of time, like a Clay Thompson, Jamal Murray, those sort of players. Yeah. Who we got now? Chris Middleton, who is getting undervalued everywhere at the, at this point. He is not again not as good of a points league guy as a category league guy. Probably only a twenty dollar player, but he's currently going for fifteen. So I think we've got some value there. Ooh, just jumped up to seventeen. Part of uh, auction salary cap strategy as well. So if you see someone who's got hardly any money left, and the, and you are debating whether you want to go one dollar more, but they're the winning bid, I often just let them take it to to drain all their mm-hmm. cash out. Yeah. So you just got Chris Middleton for 18. That's some pretty good value. But I was debating, do I take it to 19? But I thought, you know what? I'm going to drain you down to 50 bucks here and uh, <laughs> take you out of the take you out of the bidding for some other guys that I might want later on because there's still plenty of guys available who I do want. Oh, yeah. Sure. Chris Boucher, much like Mitchell Robinson, Jaron Jackson, Miles Turner, a worse player in points leagues and category leagues because his value is derived <clears throat> from blocks. Let's see what he goes. He's going for four bucks. I'll get in on him for four bucks. Um, but not too much more. I don't, I, don't, I don't think he is a guy that I'd be wanting to spend anywhere near that projected $16 salary. That makes no sense. Yeah, not, not really. I hope he'll play more this season. It kind of felt like his minutes were way too inconsistent for, for to get really good fantasy value out of him last season. He goes for six. It's obviously way less than that average. I think it's probably about right, if not a dollar or two more. But... He may, maybe he gets more minutes, but especially early on with um, Siakam injured. But Birch, Achua, they've got both of those yeah. guys to play center. Scotty Barnes is going to play at the four a little bit. OG is going to push up to the four a little bit. It's not like it's the clearest pathway for him to get minutes. Last year, he was battling Aaron Baines. Like, that, mm-hmm. wasn't, that wasn't a huge, um, a huge impediment to getting good minutes if, if the coach thought you deserved them. Yeah. Tobias Harris, I'll take him for $18. He's got scope to improve a lot if Simmons is gone I think um, I don't. we don't know who yeah. they would get back in a Simmons deal but Harris can actually improve so I'll throw 20 bucks he's on played his best basketball for Doc Rivers too So that's true oh who was that bastard oh I thought I had him Just jumped <laughs> in with one second to go Yeti my guy no alright let's I'll go 22 on Toby oh uh, come on let me have him you're going to jump in now, Ralph, aren't you? No. Ah, uh, there we go. 22 like bucks. Tobias, for... but he's all yours. There we go. 22 bucks for Tobias Harris. All right. Just my fifth player now. Just rounding things out. My turn to nominate. All right. Let's throw Kevin Porter out there. Let's see what happens here. How are you valuing Kevin Porter here? Like I said earlier, I think he's in 
he'll at least have the opportunity to have a big year. Whether or not he takes advantage of it, you know, we'll see. But he's one of those guys that I think fantasy managers should really look to gamble on. If you have to overpay slightly, it might not be the worst thing to do. Yeah, he's got a massive opportunity now. And he is, you don't have to worry about his poor efficiency in this situation. He's a bad field goal and free throw guy, but that doesn't matter here in this setting. Um, he's getting up to 20 bucks, which I think is about right. I'll bid him for 19. We'll see where that leaves me. See whether someone wants to go higher than that. His projected salary at six is ridiculous. That average of three is ridiculous. It's people not knowing what they're doing. <laughs> Ferris trying to get in here. Uh, actually, I might let Ferris take him for 20 just so he gets some money off the board. So he's not yeah. sitting there just to snipe everybody later on. Because there are other guys that I want. I've got a couple of guys um, that I'm looking for. And I reckon he's going to be in on these guys as well. But there are a couple of players here that I'm looking for. Oh, this one should be fun. Woo! Ben Simmons. Um, okay. Simmons had the worst year of his career last season. We don't know if he's going to play. Where he's going to play. What he's going to do. We have no idea. It's hard for him to be worse than last year unless he just doesn't play at all. That's that's how I'm looking at it. And I really don't think Philadelphia is going to let him just sit all season. Do you? No. Those fines are going to get to the point where he's going to have to play eventually. So yeah. I don't think he's going to miss any regular season games, whether he's in Philadelphia or somewhere else, just because his game checks aren't cheap. And... I don't care how much money you have, you're not going to be trying to give away six figures per night. Nope. Um, all right. So who's... Jalen Brown, this is one I was waiting for to come come off the board. I am very interested in where Jalen's going to go here. Obviously had that wrist injury to end his season last year, but fully healthy, ready to go. Ignore that injury thing on him. I think he's got some real significant value this year. But so does it. So do other people, it looks like as they're bidding me up on him, I'll go that, that high. Oh, 27. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, that's maybe... It's pushing too high, but uh, I'll go to 28. I'll leave it there. I think that's my last one. I think the question with him is when will he be fully cleared? Because I don't believe it's happened yet. No, I think I think, so. he's, I think he's right to go. I got him for 28 bucks. I, 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 don't, I don't believe there's any issue with him heading into the season. If it is, maybe it's a week. I, I don't think there's any problem there. I'm pretty sure he had that surgery when he did so that he'd be ready mm-hmm. for next season. All right. We're going to have a little fun with this one. See what happens. John Morant for $10. Let's see it. Oh, bullshit. Man. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in on this one. John Morant, <laughs> in a, in a, John Morant in a points league is way, way higher than uh, his category league value. Mm-hmm. I'm in on this for sure. I got Jalen Brown, by the way, if people didn't see that or hear that for 28. I've got six players now. I'm keep bidding up Jar here. Hopefully, people are just looking at that average and projected salary and not um, paying attention to it, or and paying attention to it. Sorry. Okay, it's getting a little bit too expensive for me now. I'm I'm winning at twenty seven dollars for Jar Morant. Oh yes, yeah. so are we going to get him? Oh yes, yes thank you. All right, that's seven players for me now, and I have got. What have I got left? 55 bucks for six more guys. Okay. So I'm starting to work my way down. But I'm happy with how that team is uh, is currently looking. Morant, Brown, Toby Harris, Aiton White, Haywood, and Jackson. All right. Drew Holiday. Hmm. Let's see. Real chance of him getting overdrafted, but there's not that much money left over. Ferris can get it whoever he wants with his with his one one Kevin Porter. Um, yeah, he's pushing up too high for me here. Oh, so we're we're almost in the same spot here now, Raf. I've got six guys to get with fifty five left, and you got seven guys to get with fifty dollars. If we're in the same spot, and we just approach it differently, you went earlier, I went later.
Yeah, th this is kind of the point where I start to think of some later guys that I could pin it, potentially bid for like one or two dollars mm. with little mm. resistance, you know. So, because someone like a CJ McCollum, there's not much I can do here. Sure, mm. I can bid for him, but 15 to 20 dollars that takes out a considerable amount of my remaining budget when I have 50 left. Yeah, exactly. And you see, you still need to get over half your roster in. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go to CJ up to like 19, I think. I'm, I've got him here at 18, but I won't go higher than that. Or will I? Will I go to 20? No, there are other guys that I can go for. Someone else can have CJ there. I've still got lots of guys left here. Like you look at the top of the, the board, it's yeah. Holmes, Ingram, Lonzo, Jonas, Valanchunas, Capella, Collins, Rob Williams, Halliburton, DeRozan, DeJounte Murray. A lot of guys still there. Rui Hachimura. This is why, yeah, this is why I think Ferris's strategy is going to work out for him. Just because so oh, many yeah. people have just kind of, I don't know, emptied the clip, so to speak, and he's got one hundred eighty dollars left. Yeah. So when these and guys come in, what do you think yeah. of Rui here going for two bucks? I think it's about the right price. That's fair, just because of the pieces that they added. Yeah, Russell Westbrook isn't there, but you still have Kyle Kuzma, got Montrez Harrell, Davis Spencer Bertans. Dinwiddie. So I don't think he's going to see much of a difference in his usage now. So yeah, I think two dollars is perfectly fine for him. This is Rashawn Holmes now, who's probably like a mid-teens sort of a player, who's not going that. Well, that projected salary twenty-six. It's when who's spending that on him in in this draft? They're not because he had a massive upgrade in his recent Yahoo rank. I'm pretty sure. Or right, he's getting a little bit too high for me here. Well, <laughs> you saw yours, it looks like. No, I haven't got him yet. Yeah, here we go. Ivan just bit up to 13, who's on, who's left and on auto okay. draft now. Um, I'd say, if I told you this, back to Rui Hachimura, someone left a comment on my channel. I don't know where it was, mm -hmm. but they said, in two years' time, Rui Hachimura is going to be Giannis Antetokounmpo. What would you say to that? I'd probably just keep my mouth shut <laughs> out of fear of thoroughly offending that person that's fair enough he could be good but Giannis Giannis is a generational talent like I, I don't think anyone can guarantee that another player is going to reach that level no you're setting the bar pretty high yeah can he be better sure but Giannis good uh, I'm not seeing that Oh, we would hope he can get somewhat better, but there's a lot of areas oh, to yeah. improve before getting to uh, to yeah. get to Giannis's area. Oh, Clint Capella here on the on the uh, clock on the board, up to twenty four bucks. I think this is about right for him. Grant's going to grab him. It looks like here and really whittle his numbers down. Oh no, Ferris oh, jumping. Ferris. Ferris getting his yeah twenty five twenty six is about right. Ferris has got to start grabbing some of these guys. But look, there's a ton of players here that you can get. Clinker Pala goes for $26, and Grant is down to 36 remaining. So we are... Things speed up towards the end of an auction salary cap draft because there's not as much money left to bid on these guys. Yeah. Um, Jonas Valanciunas. Um, Pelicans people are a little worried that he might be playing like 25 minutes a night. Not a little worried. That's how they think it might play out because they didn't, he's not a part of their future. How, he was great last season, but how do you think? He's more of an offensive threat than Adams, obviously. But like you said, I don't think Valanciunas is a priority for New Orleans uh, in terms of their future. I think the most important thing for them is make sure that Zion's happy if you believe the summer reports about Know, family members wanting him to leave but yeah I don't think Valentinus is going to be completely shut down in New Orleans but I think he's going to take a hit someone just threw 24 bucks on him out of nowhere where did that come from that was a huge bid that didn't make any sense what happened then I think maybe Ivan hopped back in there I don't know what happened then bid that 24. all right Jared's bringing up an, an interesting point point here saying that he doesn't think you can win a points league with a mid-round type uh, salary cap strategy I, I disagree with that because it's just all about getting value for money but how do you view that versus how you, approaching that strategy in a category league um i don't think it's impossible to win a league a points league going mid-round guys um 
because if you're going to put all that on two or three guys to get in a points league, that can be tough. I think we were talking about this earlier with injuries. Like, if one of your main guys is Joel Embiid, for example, what happens if he gets hurt? You know, so yeah, I don't. You're screwed. I don't think it's a terrible strategy to kind of save your money and let other people kind of, you know, burn theirs early on in drafts. You know, you look at the board that we have here. There's a lot of good talent on here that can help you in a points lead. Like Brandon Ingram still hasn't been bid on, for yeah. one example. John Collins being another. DeMar DeRozan out at the moment. I've got him for $13, and we're just waiting to see if that click ticks down. I'm happy to get him for 13 bucks. So that's not a huge amount to spend on DeMar DeRozan, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, I didn't end up getting him. Yeah, look, you're right. John Collins. Yeah. Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram's a huge one that's still there. Anthony Edwards. Yusuf Nurkic. Terry mm-hmm. Rozier. Jeremy Grant. DeMar DeRozan goes for 14. It's my turn to nominate. Let's do that. Let's get Ingram out there now. And let's see how people are valuing him. I've still got... What have I got left? $55. He's projected... Is it 24? Which seems about right. Let's see... If I was Ferris, I'd be getting in on that. Ferris actually got another player. Who did they get? Uh, he got DeRozan. He, yeah. All right, to 21 for Ingram. I reckon I might pull back on that there. But wouldn't mind adding him. He's up to 25 now. Oh, do I pull the trigger at 25 for Ingram? No, I think I'll leave it. Up to, yeah, yeah. Mumba's got him at 25 at the moment. He's got a lot of money left as well, Mumba. One of the only two guys with over $100 left. And he gets Brandon Ingram for $25. That's, that's pretty good. That's great value. Yeah. Okay. So Yeti throwing some names out there. So who's got the most players? No, it's me. What? I've got, I've got more players than anyone <laughs> else. I didn't realize that. That's good. Um, who we got? Jeremy Grant. He was terrible at the end of last season, but he was great to begin the year. What's the real Jeremy Grant look like, do you think? I think he looks closer to what we saw at the beginning of the year, personally. Um, now that they seem, they seem to have kind of solidified that rotation. But my one concern for him is that, that backcourt. Like if they insist on playing Killian Hayes and Kate Cunningham together, that really concerns me. Not so much for Cunningham, but because of Hayes and the fact that he really, he still doesn't have a jump shot. So what happens when he doesn't have the ball in his hands? You know, teams can kind of cheat off of Hayes and that can make things more difficult for a guy like Grant um, in terms of defensive assignments that he sees. So I think Grant's going to be what he was to be to start last year, but I do have a concern as it pertains to him being with that backcourt. Yeah, that, that, that could be a problem for sure. I, I think that Grant is sort of somewhere in between. He was His extremely yes. high usage and high efficiency was very hard to sustain. And as we saw, it was unsustainable. He, he couldn't sustain it. So I think he's going to sort of settle. But he won't also be as bad as what he was to end the year. I think it'll sort of settle somewhere in the middle there. Yeah. All right, so Anthony Edwards, here's one that I am interested in. Edwards was awesome uh, towards the end of last season. Bad to begin the year. I would say that the second half is probably more indicative, but there's been a lot of um, statistical studies on that sort of thing about rookies who improve over the second half of the season and whether that indicates what they're going to do moving forward. And in general, well, the conclusion is that no, it doesn't, that you have to take the whole sample size into consideration. So that is worth thinking about when looking at a guy like uh, Anthony Edwards. But Raph, let me throw this out to you. Now, I've, I don't think I've mentioned it much this season, but people talk about, uh, yeah, love talking about the rookie wall. But in general, the vast majority of rookies are better at the end of the season than the beginning of the season. So people would love throwing a narrative out there to suit whatever they want. But just remember that, that the vast majority of rookies get better as the season goes on and they yes. don't get worse. They, they now have a reference point in terms of how teams are going to defend them. You know, mm-hmm. the NBA level talent that they're going to see on a night on a nightly basis. So, yeah, you know, I think the rookie wall, you may hit a bit of a lull just because of the, the fatigue that can come because of how long the season is. But I think guys end up hitting their second win probably like a little bit after the All-Star break, if anything. But yeah, the thing is, the, the NBA season's a grind for everybody, right? Like, I know these guys haven't yeah. ever played 82 mm-hmm. games before, but everyone gets into slumps. 
at some point and they get mm-hmm. fatigued and the travel gets them. It happens to everybody at some point, but we only ever ascribe it to rookies. It's like, oh, they've hit a rookie yeah. wall. But you know, when, the, when again, if you're going to throw that out there and go watch for rookies, they hit a rookie wall. If it doesn't apply to you know, 70% of them, then it's not shit. I should have got Dinwiddie for more than that. That is an absolute steal for nine bucks. Steal. I was too busy talking. This is what the problem is when, when <laughs> oh, I would have taken him for 15 bucks. That is bullshit. Um, yeah, that we ascribe this theory when it applies to a vast minority of players, then, then there's no point. There's no predictive value in throwing that theory out there. But we love to assign that sort of thing around. Kyle, it happened uh, once in the past, so it's true all the time. Exactly, right? exactly. It's like we use that as positive reinforcement for a theory that we've yeah. got in our head when you know, 80% of them tell us the exact opposite. So don't let that sort of stuff get into your head too much when yeah, you know, if you if a rookie starts hitting a slump in February, well, like, I need to get rid of him because he's hit the rookie wall. Maybe not. No. All right, we've got uh Kyle Lowry here. Me and Yeti bidding him up. I got him for ten bucks. I thought I was gonna get him at a little bit more of a bargain. I'm still pissed about that Dinwiddie one. Fuck. Lowry goes for eleven. Yeah, it's pretty okay. It's a couple of guys I've got ready to target coming up here. Just hope I've got enough cash for them. Getting into a debate, Raf, this is unrelated to this draft in general, uh, on Reddit, which, you know, I love fighting with people. Um, when we're talking about the default Yahoo roster having two centers, all right? I, I hate the fact that that is the default. To me, it doesn't make any sense when every other position is set as one and center is the NBA's most fungible position and teams often yeah. play without a center. So I don't know why you need two centers there. I've got two centers in this draft because I just wanted to make it Yahoo standard. But what, what's your opinion on having those two centers as standard? I'd rather, I'd rather have an extra utility spot personally. Yes. Um, so many teams are playing kind of a positionless brand of basketball. It's like, how many true centers are there in the NBA? Well, you know? yeah. Go ahead. The, the the thing that people say, well, yeah, you can have up to, if you've got two centers, it means you can have the two centers <clears> there and then two utilities, you can have four. But my problem is more the minimums. It means you have to have two centers on your roster, but you only yeah. have to have one point guard. So there's got to be 24 mm-hmm. centers rostered across the league at all times. When may, look, And then you're talking about, so that means you have to have a Mason Plumley or Jakob Pertl, who you know, I do like, but those guys have to be rostered. Yeah. I know there's a lot of cross-pollination in terms of positional stuff, but if you only have to have 12 point guards rostered, but you do have to have 24, it doesn't make a huge, 24 centers. It doesn't make yeah. a massive amount of sense to me to do it that way. I agree with that. But people also know that this is the default that Yahoo's had for 20 years or whatever it is, so they go out there and defend it with their life. This is what I've always done, so it's the best <laughs> way to do it. What are you talking about? This always works. This is the great the great way to do it. It makes it way more difficult, therefore it's better. Uh, no, nah, not necessarily. You can always evolve and change. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I'd some, some guy tell me, well, we've I've done commission my league for 20 years and we've always run two centers and it's worked well. That's great. I've been in tons of leagues. Like, that doesn't mean that that is the only way to do it. And when we're trying to look at it logically, especially with the way the NBA is moving, it's like why I tried to say, I'm not sure that three pointers made is a great category anymore, considering when it came in, no one was hitting them. So, someone who hit two was so far ahead of everyone else. Now, it's like the, everyone hits two, basically. So, it's not as much of a differentiator as a category. And it contributes already in the points category too. So um, is it the best category we have out there? It's worth at least investigating. But oh, that's what we've always had. It, it determines value the best out of anything. I'm not sure about that. This was introduced 20 years ago. Yeah, that's a good point. DeJounte Murray. Whew, I've been waiting for this one as well. <clears throat> Can we get involved? Do I go full Spurs backcourt? I've already got Derek White. DeJounte, I think he's worth about the same price. But I think we're going to get our bid. <clears throat> a few people going in here. Grant's, Grant's going to do that thing where he's going to have no money left if he wins him and I'm going to want to make him drain out. But Ferris is in here mm-hmm. and I cannot beat Ferris in a bid. But I'm, that's all right. I'm still going to try. <laughs> 22 bucks for DeJounte Murray. Grant. Yeah, see, I want to let you just take him, Grant, for that amount. Yeah. Oh... Well, I'll get 24. I'll stop it. DeJounte at 24 here. Yeah, I think Grant's done. All right, I'm happy with that. 24 bucks for DeJounte Murray. Nice little addition to my collection. Wish I had that sound drop. Ready? 
So I've got two I've got two starting spots to fill, a center and a forward, although Jaron Jackson can slide into one of my center spots. Darius Garland. Huh. He was massive to end last season, Raf, before his injury. Yeah. He really, really turned it on. Um and looked like the Cavs' best player. Do you have faith in him maintaining that? I have faith in him, but I do not have faith in the Cavaliers uh, clearing up even more space for him to have the ball in his hands because playing alongside Colin Sexton does him no favors, no, it either fantasy-wise or in real life. So I think $11 is a really good deal for Garland. Oh, I do but too. I think you're also hoping that they move Sexton at some point because he's not a, an extension guy for Cleveland. I hope not, at least. So No, they feel like they're way yeah, out on him. Yeah. Derek Favors. Whew, two bucks. Favors is an interesting guy, Raf, because he could be um, a top 100 player for two months and then be nothing after that. And that's fine to throw that money on because it's just like mm-hmm. grabbing a guy off waivers. But, you know, who knows? Maybe they just start Roby from day one. I don't really have a... F- a, a very strong thought on the direction they're going to go there. Isaiah I Stewart, think they'll start favors. I think so too, but who knows? Just to try to get his draft, his uh, trade value up, hopefully. And do you think try anyone, to move him out of there? Do you think anyone's going to trade anything of value for him? Um, in terms of the picks that Sam Presti has been able to pull in in the past, probably not. But you know, you get another second rounder to add to the war chest. Why not? I just got Isaiah Stewart for ten bucks. Feels cheap. That's cheap. I didn't expect me to get him for ten. Um, hmm. <laughs> All right, let's throw out the Rock DJ Robbie Williams and see how people view that. Oh, this is gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, again, much better category league guy than points league guy. Do you think he starts over Horford or next to Horford? I think Williams is gonna start. Oh, um, I think so too. I, and I think they're going to have Tatum at the four personally. So, yep. yeah. But there is that means there's a spot open in the starting lineup. For who, I'm not sure. But yeah, Josh Richardson, I think Williams is going to start either way. I think I think Josh Richardson gets the first crack at that. Could be Neesmith. Okay, could, yeah, that's a good point. Could be Schroeder. Um, could be Pritchard. Could be Langford. They've got a number of guys they can throw into that spot and it doesn't have to be big minutes Neesmith, in that spot. yeah. Um, 12 bucks for Rob Williams. Yeah. Actually, I thought he'd end up going higher, but that's probably bang on that's value. A yeah. couple of really interesting names left that I'm not going to be able to get in on. I've got four players left with $21, but some really interesting yeah. guys still left here. Rogier. This is a, this is a mid-teens sort of player. So what, I ended up waiting a lot. And then just went hard in the middle. And now I've just got to wait to try and get these guys coming up. Because I don't think I can even afford to get Rozier at this price if I wanted to. All right, I'll take that. What'd you get him for? 15. Yeah, that's, a, that's again, it's, it's about the right area for Rozier. You know, risk of shooting regression from where he was last season is definitely a, definitely a thing. Um, I still need to fill out I don't know. It's weird how when you draft guys and Yahoo puts them into the spots, like I've drafted Jaron Jackson, Isaiah Stewart, but they haven't filled my second center spot yet. Like Isaiah Stewart can just slide straight in there, my guys. You can just put him into that center spot, but I can't adjust where he goes. That's fine. Halliburton's an interesting player for me. We still haven't bid on Buddy Heald, if I'm not mistaken. Nope. Nope. Kemba's there. Cade's there. Jalen Green, Jalen, yeah. all the rookies are still there. I'm surprised that they're the only yeah. ones that I'd throw out early just to see where people are viewing them. Halliburton for eight. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually, that's a good good bargain, I think, there from Team BH. Eight's probably good. You said Jalen Green, so we're going to bid up Jalen Green here. All Ooh, right, let's go. Stuck. Let's go. I think this is like, I think you'll go for over 10, and I don't think you necessarily should. But we'll see. <laughs> and Jared's mad now as I put him out there. <laughs> and he does—he can't afford him. Yeah. So Looks like he's going to be yours for eight. Oh, yeah. I didn't. Oh, didn't even notice that. All right, that's fine. I'm I'm okay with him at eight bucks. That feels pretty solid to me. So what have I got? Thirteen dollars for three spots. Okay. Happy to get Jalen Green onto my team there.
Jared Allen, this is a guy that I do want. Let's see if I can get him at a decent price. I don't think I've got the cash left to do it, though. If he wants him, Ferris should win this one. Yeah, yeah. Or he should win. I'm, I'm out. Um, we just got all of them, but yeah. He, now, a question for you. How much attention mm-hmm. do you pay to playoff schedule when drafting? I really don't pay too much attention. I think my thing is let me get there. And then I'll try to figure it out from there and just kind of hope things work out. You know, I don't really take playoff schedule too much into consideration personally. I'm exactly the same. I, I just don't think it's, again, you're just finding the smallest, smallest thing to try and flip guys and then it can get too much into your head and you miss yeah. out on the actual players who are good. When things can change and schedules can change and teams mm-hmm. players can get traded and teams can be players can be worse or bad or sitting or resting at that point anyway and a five game week in your playoffs might be great but your team ends up being terrible and they're resting everyone and it doesn't mean anything so I think we definitely overvalue that D'Angelo Russell yeah I'm interested in D'Angelo Russell he is going to go, go for a bargain here I think he's like an 18 to 20 oh no, people are bidding him up it's like an 18 dollar guy I reckon and that, sal- that average salary of seven dollars is insanely low 13 bucks for first that is oh that is cheap that is good for him Still a couple of really, really interesting top 50-ish type names around in, uh, let's say, the top of the board. Like you've got there's Brogdon there, there's Nurkic there, Levert's there. Bunch of guys still around, which I'm not going to be able to afford because the most I can bid on someone is $11. Yes. I want to see where Karis Levert goes price-wise too. Yeah, that average for seven of seven bucks for the word is way too low. Andre Drummond, anyone going to throw an extra dollar on him? I'm not. Handcuff, yeah, handcuffing's not really a thing in fantasy basketball, especially in a daily changes league like this. It's not really a thing. Weekly league, roto mm-hmm. league, sure. Uh, daily change, not really. Oh, you end up going for two bucks. Someone bid more than the minimum on Drummond. <laughs> there are a lot of other players out there you can go for that isn't Andre Drummond. Here we go. Cade Cunningham. Um, how confident in you or are you in Cade becoming a future star? I'm confident in him. I think he has all the tools to be that type of player. Um, the thing is, like we were talking about earlier with Jeremy Grant, that combination of Killian Hayes is the key. Um, if Killian can develop a jump shot, then I think things become even more smooth in terms of how they, all the pieces fit. But if he can't and Detroit basically has to play four on five offensively, that's a big problem for everyone on that roster. So we'll see. I, I'm not too optimistic with regard to the early start to this season, but I think Cade ultimately will be fine. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think he's going to be really good. Um, he goes for 10 bucks here. It's pretty good value, I think. Yeah. Pretty good value. So with Cade's shooting ability, I'm concerned they're going to have him off the ball a lot more than he yeah, should. Be. I worry about how what I worry about what Dwayne Casey's going to do. That 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 is a worry. <laughs> um, all right, Kemba Walker. I reckon this could end up being a steal. To me, there's two twenty dollars players left on the board in um, Levert and Nurkic, and Siakam would be if he wasn't hurt. They're probably my top three value guys. If maybe you could throw Colin Sexton into that mix, but I'm not certain. Kemba goes for under 10. I think it's not bad. I really want to get a forward here. No, there you go. Just bidding Ferris up. Take his money away. What positions do you need, Raf? I need one more starting center. And then at that point, it's just filling out the utilities and a bench. But now I have a utility in Kemba. So 25 bucks for five spots. That's not too bad at all, in my opinion. No, and getting Kemba for 10, I think, is really, really good value. That's that's yeah. going to be strong for you. Malcolm Brogdon is another guy who's got some you know, interesting mid-teen value, I think, maybe pushing up to 20. Really, really strong season last year, of course. A guy that you know, mm-hmm. is always having these leg problems, though, so we, we worry a little bit about recurring issues there and the slowing yeah. in pace are from Ricardo, but he's hung, hanging around a little bit here. I'm really, I really want to see where Yusuf Nurkic goes here. I think he's going to have a season that surprises a lot of people. Um, I, I would love to get him on my team. I don't think I will. 
But yeah, he's a strong option for me. Um, all right, Brogdon's at thirteen, and he's going to go to Yeti for thirteen dollars. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That feels like a steal to me. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think guards and guards in Carlisle's system will be fine. I think. Yeah, I that yeah, especially with um, I was gonna say the injury to TJ Warren that that helps to boost everyone's usage yeah. as well. Robert Covington, not a good points league player. Not good at all. Doesn't really generate much there. I don't think he's even worth more than five bucks. Was he at four? Uh, I think I'll leave that. He's just he's just not able to generate points at a high level. Yeah. Someone is spending too much money on him here at five bucks, I think. Oh, that's an auto draft guy. Someone dropped out. For I would not spend that on him. Category league? Yeah, of course. But points league, no thanks. Ivan bidding on Mikhail Bridges, another guy who's significantly worse in this format. All right, in a points league, would you take Mikhail or Miles Bridges first? I'd take Miles Bridges. So would in I. a points league. Yep, so would I. Um, you know, category wise, the, the table, you know, the table turns, so to speak, but points, give me give me Miles Bridges. Yep. And I think Miles is going to be even better than he was last season, too. He took a massive step up in his shooting, so I worry that does that does that sustain? Because mm-hmm. he went to like a 40% three point guy. Yeah. I hope it can. But I, that's that's my worry with him and how they decide to run that. Like some Hornets people think he'll start over PJ Washington. I'm not as confident in that, but I'd be pretty excited if he did. Um, he was a guy that I thought could break out in year two, and it didn't happen, and it, and it really happened last mm-hmm. season. And, and big steps forward could be coming. I, th- I think. Do you think long term he's a better player than PJ Washington? I think so, but well, you have to bid first. I'll go ahead and let you do that. I'm, I'm bidding Nurkic. I just want to see what happens here. Okay. Yeah, I think so, but I don't think that's PJ's fault. Just because of the the way they've used him positionally has been a bit of an issue. Because their centers have largely stunk, they've had to use PJ there. And I think he's more of a four. He's much more of a four than a five. So, and I don't think he has the talent to necessarily force mismatches at the five and be a really good player. So, I think that's why I would take Miles over PJ just because of how Charlotte has used PJ to this point in his career. They can get him to the four exclusively. I think he'll be a lot better off. PJ's thing's interesting because when he plays at center, his fantasy numbers go up. Like they, they, he's, yeah. just, he's way better at center, but he's only six, like six, eight. He can hold his own for a few minutes at center. Um, and, and I think the Hornets lineups with him at center have been usually pretty strong, but the yeah. size is a worry long-term. Um, I like his ability to shoot from out there. 20 bucks for Yusuf Nurkic, by the way, which is higher than I think it'll go in a lot of drafts. But I actually think that mm-hmm. that's a, I, I think he might be a $25 player, to be honest. That's That could end up being a, a, a steal here. Now, Siakam, mm-hmm. whew, what do we do with him? Because this is a, this is a 30, $25 to $30 player, if healthy. But how are people going to view it? I think people are going to be a bit more conservative on Siakam than they should be. So do I. So it's, I'm trying to get involved no, here. November's not that far off. It's a, it's a month. The season, so. I think it's a month that he's out, which is not great. But you're getting that discount into the into the draft room. Like it's it's coming. Like he's he's at thirteen bucks here. It's it's um, it's good value. Yes, got my other center. Oh, did you get him thirteen bucks? That is, oh, what would you, what's everyone, <laughs> I didn't have the money. What's everyone doing? Now, oh my god! I have to get another one for my bench, but whoop de do. I got Pascal Siakam for thirteen dollars. Yeah, look, if, if he's back mid-November, that's like a, it's a killer. Yeah. Like, it's a huge, huge um, win. Uh, Mike Conley. I think Conley may sit a lot of back-to-backs this year. I don't think there's going to be many players on that pre prescribed rest um, situation, I think he's one of them. From talking to people around the league. I think they're going to be playing yeah. him like 28, 29 and you know, sitting him. Uh, Karis Levert, he's another one who should go for close to 20 bucks. And another guy, because of his poor shooting numbers, He's a better points than category guy, though he did he did shoot pretty well um, in his time in Indiana. But thirteen bucks, come on, can't, don't let him go for that. Oh, you can't you can't jump in yeah. here either, Raf. Jesus, someone do something, make him go to twenty. 
Yeah, at this point, he's a steal. I, I think with everything that happened last year, oh yeah, and he still managed to have a good run in Indiana. So, I think this year, fully healthy, we'll see what happens with the coaching change. But like I was saying earlier, I really think that guards are better with Rick Carlisle than Biggs. So, I expect them to be even better this season. Ferris sixteen dollars. Get- that's insane. Yeah, Ferris gets him for sixteen. That's a it's a huge deal. Ferris just got him and Nurkic for thirty six combined, and like they could both easily get to thirty on their own. That's some good value, I think. Grant, Kawhi, you can have him. You can have Kawhi for one dollar. Kawhi's like, <laughs> he's not going to play. Like, what are we doing? Someone asked me in one of the other mocks, why did Kawhi slip so low? Like, you, he went too early in that draft. Like, there's no, I am not drafting Kawhi Leonard anywhere. Are you drafting Clay Thompson at all? Um. If I can get him for like one or two dollars, sure. But I would let someone else nominate him personally. He's not going to be back until January. Like they, they, the Christmas Day yeah. thing came out, but Warriors people just don't expect it. Him to be there till January, and then he's going to be limited. And maybe mm-hmm. his full strength by the All Star break, maybe. Okay, I don't know. Not, not for me. Not interested. Yeah, I think if you get to the point where you need a specialist then you may want to pick him up. But in terms of drafting him, I don't really know about all that. All right. So what have we... Marcus Smart. Mm, probably like a 7 to $10 guy, I would say. So that projected salary of 16 is too high. The average salary of 6 is too low. So he's sort of somewhere in the middle. And he goes for 6 to Ivan. It's actually pretty good value. Mm-hmm. Oh, off night is on the board. What? Why? Yeah, that that's... The King's fourth guard. I think, yeah, Kento's only got $14 left, so he can have he can have him. He can have him for a dollar. Like, that's a, a rookie who's going to be playing under 20 minutes a night. You can have him. But if you're going to do that, why not, to tr- why not try to sneak Buddy Heald in? I want to take uh, yeah. yeah. If you're going to take a rookie, I I'd take Shingun for a dollar. The path for him getting minutes yeah. is a lot clearer to me. Oh, yeah. Jalen Suggs is still on the board too. He and so is Mobley. Yeah. And there's a bloke that's on this list with an average dollar uh, amount of a dollar one point four dollars. Nikhil Alexander Walker. If anyone's getting him for one point four dollars, I think you're doing all right. That's Robert. <laughs> What's people stop? Stop bidding up Jakob Pertl. Ah, <laughs> oh, you bastards. I think Pertl's going to have a big year. Or a bigger year than what he did last year, anyway. All right. Since we're on the Spurs, here's my question. Yep. Would you bid a dollar on Zach Collins? Nope. I don't think he's playing until February. No. Um, okay. I just It's his third foot surgery in the last, like, 15, mm-hmm. 14 months or something. He, when do you have the last yeah. one? June or July? I don't think he's there till February, to be honest. And uh, would you? Um, it depends on what the rest of my roster would look like, but I probably wouldn't because foot surgeries and bigs are not a good mit, good match at all. So, I'd like I'd like to see him healthy for three in a row is rough. Like that, yeah. that's tough, right? That's uh, very hard. For, and if you're going to miss, you're not good enough for me to go. You're going to miss half the season, and I think you're going to be awesome when you return I just don't think that's the case mm. Colin Sexton been hanging around a while here so he's uh, probably the best player still around and he's going to go cheap first going to get him at a bargain he's a high scoring player that works really well in the points league mm-hmm. and he's at 16 at the moment Ferris just needs to get him he's got the cash to do it just needs to grab him oh here we go we're pushing up to 20 that's good though that's about right, 20 bucks for him. That average salary of 9.5 is not uh, not accurate. So out of these injured guys, you can see Murray and Warren. You've already drafted Siakam. Would you, will you touch either of these guys? No. I think Murray's going to be out for a while. Yeah. Um, Murray tore his ACL in April. We forget that. Oh, yeah. I, and I definitely forget that. He, like April. I think he may be a bit more inclined to try to return, but at that point, how much is it really going to help you in a fantasy league? So, I wouldn't touch him. Warren doesn't have a timeline. I'd leave him alone as well. Yep, I'm, uh, I'm with you on that. Montrez Harrell literally may not play in February or March <laughs> if Thomas Bryant returns, but could be a top 60 mm-hmm. guy before that. Like, who knows? Yeah. Um, for three bucks, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get in on that. 
I just uh, Gafford's going to start. That was always going to be the case. But then what happens when Bryant returns is the big question. Do they play three centers again? Do they just annoy the shit out of us by doing that? Maybe. <laughs> All right, the numbers. I hope they don't do that. Now, nah, hopefully, Wes Unseld is not as frustrating as Scott Brooks. But it, it, mm. try and work it out. Gafford, Bryant, Harrell. Who plays? Who doesn't? It's very, very tough. And it's not like you can slide Harold to the four for many minutes when you've got no. Hachimura, you got Kuzma, Bertans, you got Avdia. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that, that roster is so um, crowded, and mm-hmm. you, there's no one. You, well, they're not great, but they're not bad. It's like you got ten average blokes to try and fit into this rotation somehow, and I don't know how it gets done. Like Avdia, I think is a better prospect personally than what Hachimura is, and, and Corey Kispert, for example. But is he even going to get a chance to play? I don't. I don't think so. Six dollars for Dan Gafford. Yeah, I think I'm going to sit this one out. Yeah, I'm out on that. This two is too high for me. It's a four or five dollar play. Not as good in a points league again. Harrell's a much better points league center for the Wizards than what Gafford is. But they go back to back. Six bucks for Gafford, eight for Harrell. Yeah, it's probably about right. Probably a little bit too high for me for um. Uh, yes. the guy that I just mentioned. Oh, here we go, Suggsy. Do you think Jalen Suggs or Jalen Green will have a better fantasy season? In a points league, I'd go Green. Yep. Um, categories, I'd go Suggs. Uh, I agree. Oh, that's exactly how I would look at that. I don't know why I just bid on him then, but I did. That's all right. Someone else up, upbidded me. We're getting through this now. We are over halfway, which is great but there's not a huge amount of cash left over. So Suggs has gone for more than I got Jalen Green for now, which is interesting. He's at $11. I got Green for eight. Um, and Cunningham went for 10. So that's very interesting to see people were like really you know, diving in to grab Jalen Suggs here. So he's the highest priced rookie. I did not expect that to be the case. Yeah. My, my turn to nominate. I think, so what, I think what helps him is you look at Orlando's backcourt, you know, Markel Fultz without a timeline to return. They've had other injuries there. Cole Anthony really didn't have that good of a rookie season, and and he struggled in Vegas, in my opinion, oh, too. Bad, so, yeah. I think that's going to be impacting Suggs's draft value, if anything. I really like Suggs. I think he's it was a great pick for them there. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't probably have spent more on him than Cunningham or, or Green, but I think mm-hmm. he was getting um undervalued in some spots maybe not here as much Miles Bridges goes for six bucks I think that's pretty strong value I'm still needing a forward to round out my roster but that's fine there's there's lots of forwards around here Nikhil Alexander Walker is somehow a forward eligible player (laughs) I don't really know how that's the case Um, Evan Mobley let's see how the fourth rookie Fifth, actually, because Davion Mitchell's gone for a dollar. So Mobley looks like he's going to get at a pretty cheap price here. I, I just I don't know what they're going to do with Markinen, Allen, Mobley. Does Kevin Love play at all? Yeah. It's so confusing. I think they're going to try to put Love on ice. I just don't know how he's going to take it and then how that impacts the rest of that roster. I, I, yeah, get, I, don't really... I get the feeling that he won't take it well. But yeah. I also think that the rest of the roster is very much we don't care what Kevin Love thinks. I don't think he has that sort of pull that he may have a couple of years ago. He might be like, I'm yeah. complaining. The rest of us will be like, that's fine, Kev. I'll see you later. Like, I don't think any of them care. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I, just, I just don't see them caring. Um, Buddy Hill right, for $9. So- I'm going to get Alexander Walker off the board right now. All right, let's do it. I'm in on Alexander Walker for the right price. Let's see if I can get the right price on him there. Um, (laughs) What's he doing going for $7? You know what? I'll I'll go. I can't bid again, but I'll go. Eight bucks, nine. Fer- Ferris. Oh, <laughs> it might be getting too high for Alexander. I think he's in a solid spot. He's no guarantee mm-hmm. to be this good, but he is in a solid spot. Nine dollars for Nikhil Alexander Walker. Not a bad pick. Probably a top one hundred guy. 
I can save some money for Trey Murphy, though. I think he's going to have a good year down there. Oh, so how does he fit in then? Okay, that's interesting because I, I really liked him. I thought you know, he went way too low in the draft. I would have had him at like 13, 14 around that area. Not maybe way too low, but too low. Um, definitely would have had him over like a Corey Kispert very easily. Um, well, how does he fit in the rotation? I just think, I think people undervalue Virginia guys just because their numbers aren't the most impressive. That team plays slower than anyone on an annual basis. So they're not going to have jump off the page numbers. But the thing is, he was a 50, 40, 90 guy last season. Wasn't he? I know it's college basketball, he, but he was that's like a, pretty good. And I don't think they're going to be able to keep him on the bench. So I think he's going to play. I don't know if he'll start. I doubt he starts just because you've got Ingram and, and Williamson there at the forward spots. But I think he's going to be one of the first guys off the bench personally. So their bench is probably going to be Josh Hart. Um, you got Lewis. Jackson Hayes. And then you got mm. Thomas Sadoransky, Naji Marshall, Garrett Temple. Do those guys play? I think Sadoransky has to play, but I don't know. I, I yeah. would, I'd like I, them I think, to play Murphy, but I, I don't know. I think Temple's the one who's going to lose out, if anything. Agreed. I know he's a good veteran guy to have on that roster, but I think he's the one, if they have to give some minutes to a younger guy, that would end up losing out personally. No, I, I, I do agree that he will be the guy. RJ Barrett just goes for $16, which in a points league, he's probably worth close to that. Maybe not quite that much, but that's still not bad. Gee, come on, man. Who's, Who's nominating James Johnson? James Johnson? Dude. I had someone try to argue with me the other day that James, uh, Paul, uh, James Johnson's a better player than Paul Millsap as well, which was in- an interesting argument. Um, yeah, this is. But a- here's my thing. No one's bid on Nicholas Claxton yet, and we're bidding on James Johnson? Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with not bidding on Claxton because I, I don't know how he gets the minutes. Yeah, hey, I agree with you. But yeah, James Johnson, that, yeah. that's insanity. There's no, you're not, he's not even going to play every night. <laughs> John uh, John Isaac. Whew, now this is is an interesting one. Obviously with the injuries, he's already yeah, he's not as good in the points league again. Another one of those players, but I'm not sure. Evan Fournier still there. If, it, if this were a category uh, category league, you'd be worth rolling the dice on. Ferris just finished I his roster off. In a points league. Ferris just yeah. went. I'm done. Twenty nine bucks. I'll take it. That's the end of my roster. Oh. And he just took uh, took John Isaac <laughs> for twenty nine. All right, not getting outbid. You got him. Um, I was going to ask you a question before I saw that and started laughing. Uh, what was it? Oh yeah, okay. Thad Young. What are we? What are you doing with Thad Young? The Spurs have not announced that they've acquired him yet. I don't think he's playing for this team. Every Spurs person is going. Here's our rotation, and they're not including him. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know where he's going to end up. If he was on San Antonio, there's great value. But who? The, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Me neither. Um, like I agree with you that he would be a clear rotation guy. He'd start if for them, surely. He's in San Antonio, but are they going to play him? You know, I think they're going. To, I think they're going to try to get good trade value for him if they can. But the, this, the sooner the better, because I don't think he fits in with their timeline. No, he doesn't. But I, I don't know. I don't know what it's, it's just so weird that there's just nothing mentioned about him at all. It's like he just doesn't exist. He's in like the void at the moment. He's one guy where. You have to hope that your fantasy draft is later in the preseason as oh, opposed yeah. to what we're doing right now because yep. you don't know. Look, if he was starting for the Spurs, he is worth way more than this projected $4. Uh, way more. Oh, but that's 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 a steal. Uh, $17 for Wendell Carter Jr. That, that doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, I got Gordon Haywood and Jaron Jackson and Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Green all for cheaper than Wendell Carter Jr. Auction prices, salary cap prices are weird. Um, that's that's very weird. Steven Adams, I'm not bidding anything on him. You can have him for $1. I'm okay with that. Prices get weird, I'm guys. I'm going to keep my next player secret here. All right. This is who I see was going to bid on. puts him on the board. I was going to bid on Keldon, so let's see if I can get him for my remaining $10. And then get a couple of one dollar blokes in there as well. I don't think I'm gonna. I think this asshole is gonna beat up against me. Because I just need that. For, oh, I'm winning at six dollars. Last time I spoke oh. about Keldon Johnson on this podcast, Raph, I had an earthquake. So hopefully nothing happens bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, so that's his, that's his new nickname, the Earthquake Keldon Johnson. Nice. All right, I'll throw the ten on him. 
You would fill yeah. out that gap. I think that honestly. Olympic run is going to be good for his development too. So. He get, he gets does nothing defensively. He can't do anything there. But in a points league, he's going to get good usage and good scoring. And, and I'm out. I'm, I've been mm-hmm. priced out on Kelton, but that's okay. Eleven dollars is not a bad uh, not a bad effort to get yeah. him. It's my turn to nominate a player. All right, let's do it. Let's nominate Paul Washington Jr. Cool. My guy's still available. How how high am I going to go on Washington here? Not that high is my guess. Not up to... Oh, maybe. Maybe we'll throw seven on him. No, it's gone to eight. I'm not going... Uh, no, let's... No, let's go to nine. I don't love it, but I just need to get... Another forward, forward slash center eligible player. Oh, you waited right to the last second, my guy. <laughs> oh, all right, I'll throw my last eleven dollars on him, and then I'm out, and I'll go on to someone else. I think I'm going to end up getting him. Yep. All right, PJ Washington for eleven dollars. Yeah, it's, it, is, it is more than I wanted to spend on him, but. I wanted to also to have a couple of one dollar flyers at the end here, just for you yeah. know streaming rotation type purposes. That I don't want to be spending too much money on those last spots, and I can get some value yeah. in these last rounds for sure. All right, so that's eleven players on my roster. I've got two guys to go. Ferris is out, and that is t- typically what happens. If you save your money, like myself and Ferris did the most in this draft, you are generally the first people to finish the the, the auction. It happens nearly all yeah. the time that you don't have a player for the longest. You smash out. 13 guys out of the next 25 picks and then you're done. And especially if, mm-hmm. if you do it in a deep league, it's really hilarious. I remember doing it once in a 20-team salary cap draft and I waited and waited and didn't have anyone out of the top you know, 30 guys that were nominated and then I grabbed 13 of the next 20 players and I was done. <laughs> and I said, I'll see you guys later. I'll come back in two hours. See how, see yeah. how it ends up. Devontae for $6. I think that's probably pretty good value. Yeah, I think he's going to start. Oh, I would be shocked if he didn't, to be honest. Plus, I don't think giving Zion more playmaking responsibility is going to hurt Devontae all that much, given his experiences in Charlotte. So Yeah, and, and Devontae, $6, yeah. Devontae can play off ball as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. $2 for Kelly Olenek. Remember how good he was last year? I, he's not getting back to that level, but he's an interesting player. $2 oh, for Kelly Olenek. That's good. That's good. Okay. Not going to oh, play this guy's theme music, but we're going to throw him in there. You're not going to play his theme music? Oh. No, because I can't stand that song. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. That one? <laughs> That's better than the Mo Bamba song. Oh, the Mo Bamba song is terrible. The amount of people that tell me, oh, you got to play that uh, play that song. It is terrible. It's so bad. <laughs> Three bucks. Three dollars. I'll take that. What if uh, Robin Lopez takes his minutes? I think they're looking at Robin as more of a mentor. I would hope so. Wendell Carter Jr. than anything. Um, Magic centers. What's Wendell go for? Seventeen. Yeah, yeah. That that's a crazy discrepancy. That's insane, especially when they still haven't truly designated a starting center yet. Well, let me ask you this question: Who do you think is the better real life NBA player between those two? (sighs) Man. I honestly don't know. Um, I think I really don't know. I I, I want to say Wendell, but I think I think Mo has the higher ceiling by far. Uh, I would agree that Mo does that. have the higher ceiling, but he's also been bad in probably ninety six percent of the games that he's mm-hmm. played. Um, I think that Wendell is at this point currently by far the better player. But if we're looking at fantasy yeah. value as well, like if they play the same minutes, Bumba's so much better. But it's it's about getting to those same minutes. Who who knows? We don't know what Jamal Moses is going to do. Yeah. We've got no idea. Mm-hmm. I'll say this: Bamba's the one that I'm more likely to to roll the dice on. Uh, agree. Yep, I agree with that. And it depends. It depends where we're doing it. Um, like I'm not spending seventeen dollars yeah. on Wendell Carter, obviously. But yeah, because if it yeah, hits that. with Bamba, the upside is way higher. It's probably twenty percent, ten percent chance of him getting twenty five minutes. But if it does, whew, he's way up there. Yeah. Ubre, someone's four bucks on Kelly Ubre. I'm not so sure about that. I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't know. I'm just not sure how he's... Is there minutes upside there behind Bridges, Washington, Haywood, Rogier? 
Is there enough minutes for him? Not as many as he he would probably want. Yeah, not the, enough to get full fantasy value either. The thing is that nobody actually wanted him, and that yeah, no one wanted to pay him or bring him in. So he's just going to have to settle for that yeah. twenty four. Who Al Farouk Amini? What is going on? What are we doing? This guy's not even going to be on a roster. The Spurs are going to cut this guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, Jared wants to talk about people ruining the draft. This is the ruin here. What is that? That is useless. That's the same bloke who picked James Johnson. Yeah. There's absolutely no need for that. And you will not be invited to any more leagues. Thank you. Yeah, I have much more of a problem with something like that than someone conserving their money. I don't think... Yeah. There's just no need for it. I don't think holding on to your money is a bad strategy to take. No, it's a, it's a strategy that I employ all the time. Sadiq Bay, Yeah, he's nice. Two bucks over my budget. Love seeing that. Two dollars over your budget. This is the part where it just turns into like a snake for me. And with everyone still got any money left, I've got to be... It's a really interesting part of the of a draft here. Uh, Raf, when I'm sitting here with... I can only do one dollar guys. So the only guys I can get are the guys that I nominate. But if I throw someone out now that I want... I can just get outbid on them and I lose that player. So I've got to try and throw out mm-hmm. guys that I don't want, but then I risk if no one bids on that guy, then I'm stuck with someone that I don't want. It's yeah. a weird it's a weird spot. Jay Sean Tate for a dollar. I think he gets a huge boost with John Wall not there. Huge. Yeah. I don't know about huge. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Because of who all they added. Go yeah. Ahead. But I'll tell you why. Because he wasn't going to start for them. Right, so mm-hmm. he was going to come off the bench and play. You have to battle with like Kenyon Martin Jr. for backup four minutes and back up Jalen Green at the three. And now I think he's absolutely the overwhelming favorite to start at the three. So he goes from maybe twenty-seven minutes to thirty minutes. So, that, so his his role just automatically improves mm-hmm. straight, straight off the bat. And it might seem weird to say, well, why is a power forward gaining from a point guard being not there? Because everyone just is sliding down a position, and he's going to come yeah. in and start at the three. I think that's the big boost yeah. for him. I, I can see that. I, I, yeah, I think unless, early on, he'll get to start. They're but, not going to start Gordon. I think later, he, yeah. Like who, else, who, who, who? What are the threes that they have? They don't really have many. Yeah, Daniel House. He's not a part of the future, and he's not good. He's more. I think he's more of a two. He probably uh, is. Like who else? Who do I have that's a three? There's, there's not. There's no one. They really could there. very well slide Green to the three and, and start Josh Christopher. But jo- Josh know? Green is so skinny. He not Josh Green. Uh, Jalen Green True. is so skinny. He's so skinny. Jalen Green, yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Oh, for who am I going to throw out for a dollar? Let's just do Bogdan. I know I'm not going to get him, and I just get some other people's money off the board. Why is Bogdan still here, by the way? What is going on? That's weird. <laughs> He's still on the board. Clarkson, I think Norman Powell. I think Norman Powell's not in a great spot in Portland, just because you got Lillard, Lillard and McCollum there. But at this point in the draft, it's pretty good value given the amount of money that's left on the board. Someone just got bogged down, bogged down average for six dollars. That is pretty strong value, I would say. Yeah. Now we talked earlier, Raf. Like he shot forty six percent from three last year. It's not going to happen again. Mm-hmm. And that really, like, it pushed him to like you know top seventy or eighty or whatever it was. He's probably not going to do that again. And especially with um, Hunter Reddish being healthy, which they weren't last yeah. season. Um, but he's still good, obviously. People think yeah. that um, he's not going to start. I've had people tell me that they don't think he's going to start and they'll start Kevin Herter. It would be insane to me if they did that. Do you have any worries about that? Not too much, just because he's... Even if he doesn't hit that 46% from three, he's by far the best shooting wing. Oh, yeah. So I think for spacing reasons, he'll get to start personally. Here's an interesting question. You might not find it interesting, but I do because I'm asking it. Who's the Hawks' second best yeah. player? Man, that's a good question. Capella, Collins, Bogdanovich. I, I I lean Collins, especially if he can continue to make strides as a defender. So I thought he got better in that he end did. of the floor last season. He still isn't a stopper, but I thought he he's he wasn't a complete liability. I'll say that. See, I, I really like Collins. I, I think he might actually even be fourth because I think Capella is a top three defensive center in the NBA, maybe even top five defensive yeah. player in the NBA. Okay. And Bogdanovich's ability to score, shoot, and pass is super valuable. And having a wing that can do all that is great. But I, I, I don't know. It's a tough question. Larry Markin goes for a dollar. I don't know. What are they going to do with Markin? Why, why do they pay him that much money? 
Who it's else? Cleveland. Who, who, who were they bidding against? Who who was bidding that much money for Larry Markin? And that's that's the question I want answered. No one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Jordan Clarkson goes for three bucks. Good good yep. pick from you. I'm happy with that. So okay, let, you've got six dollars left for two slots. Are you going to go five and one? Are you going to go three and three? Like, how are you looking to spend that six dollars? I'll probably. I think I'd lean more towards five and one. You know, as opposed to three and three. Just try to get. So I think your last pick. There's a very low chance of someone outbidding you at this point. So yep. I would probably use the majority of my dollars on that penultimate pick, if anything. I think that's the way you got to go about it. You know, we can save money as much as we want and all that sort of stuff, but that that 13th guy it's got to be a dollar it, mm-hmm. it, it just has to be. Yeah. I, I think it just has to be a dollar if you're in a situation like ferris was and isaac's the guy you want you want to just outbid everyone else by all means but uh, in general yeah. i want that spot so i can you know, stream and 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 drop and add hot waiver guys initially because if you spent 29 dollars on your worst player you're probably less likely to drop them to get that hot free agent in so i'd rather spend it in other areas mm-hmm. thad young just goes for a dollar look if he hits look if he if he actually somehow plays in san antonio it's a massive win it's probably not yeah. going to happen, but Goran Dragic for a dollar. I'm not sure I'm behind that one. I don't really understand what Dragic's role is going to be, whether it's in Toronto or in Dallas. Still waiting on that uh, on that Dragic trade as well, which who knows if it's actually going to go down. October 1 is the uh, the rumor. Oh, okay, here's a question. Speaking of Dragic trades, Moses Brown. What are you making of him this year? Obviously, he had big numbers last season, but... I could make the argument that he is the... What, Hassan, what's, what's this dickhead doing? Um, I could make the argument that Brown is worse than Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleber, Christos Porzingis, and Willie Cauley-Stein. And he won't play every night. Yeah. I could also see the argument that maybe they, maybe they start him. Like I don't know what the hell to make of that. I don't like that spot for him at all. Um, Same. Just, you've got a team that's, that's trying to contend and they have multiple bigs, as you mentioned, that list of names there. I don't like this spot for Moses at all. I think he's an untouchable guy as far as fantasy is concerned, whether it's points or categories. What if he goes to Toronto? And then it's him, Birch, no. Precious. It's still, yeah, he's not, he's, he put up big numbers. He's not that good. Yeah, on a team that, that has actual ambition of winning basketball games, no. But if he ends up somewhere where they're just playing out the string, then he can have some value. But at this point, we really can't predict that, you know? Yeah, no, it is uh, tough. I just realized that my, my camera has been frozen this whole time and I don't know why it's not coming back up. So <laughs> I apologize, people haven't been, you're just seeing my face looking static on the video um, because I look too busy paying attention to the drive room. LaMarcus Aldridge for two bucks. Do you think he starts or Blake Griffin? I don't think either one of them starts. I think Claxton's going to start personally. Do you? Oh, I, I, I think he should. I, I don't think there's any chance that he does. But that's interesting. I'd love for him to start. I just think he, he offers the most promise. I agree. In terms of that roster. Those other guys can be more situational guys, if anything. I, I don't see Aldridge starting. I don't see. I don't really see him being in that conversation. I think it's either going to be Claxton or Griffin. But I just think Claxton gives him a little bit more in terms of potential, especially as a defender going to try and get my camera back back online here all right let's see if we can come back up because now it's completely disappeared are we back not yet all right norman power going for six bucks i don't know why my camera is not working but that's fine oh, it was my turn to nominate a player let's nominate Harrison yes. Barnes for one dollar and see if anyone else wants to take him all right I'm just going to oh. quickly go put the headphones down rough while I go try and figure out what's going on with this camera as this draft runs okay back, feel free to just you know if you, the floor is yours all right um yeah Harrison Barnes is now up to three dollars uh, I think at this point in the draft that that's pretty good value um We'll see what happens in, in Sacramento with regards to that rotation. Most specifically, uh, Marvin Bagley the third. You know, how much are they going to play him? Does he start? You know, he play Harrison at the three, but we'll see here. We'll see what happens there. 
And now we've got Clay Thompson on the board. We talked about him earlier, and Josh said he doesn't expect him to play for a little bit. Um, even if he's cleared to full, for a full go early, I think Golden State is really going to man- manage his minutes, be really strict about that. I don't really like him as a fantasy option. Now it's my turn to nominate someone. And I'm you guys back. heard our conversation about Nicholas Claxton a bit earlier. So I'm going to nominate him right now. I'm uh, back. Hopefully I can grab I'm back, but my camera is not responding still. So okay. I, don't know, I don't know what's going on there, but um, it's all right. People can just do I'll have to get my face back soon, but I don't know why it's not there. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Did I get Harrison Barnes? No, I didn't. I went for three bucks. Clay yeah. Thompson went for a dollar. I've still got these two slots to fill, and there are other guys around that I can yes. get. I got Claxton for four dollars. I will take that. I, look, I'm not keen on it just because I just don't know how the minutes are going to shake out. I would give him twenty five a night. I'm not confident that they do. I, I would, but who, who knows? I'll say this: I would not pay Wendell Carter Junior dollars uh, no. for Nicholas Claxton. <laughs> Boyan Bogdanovic, oh. he's a big bounce back guy, I think, this year. I know he's 32, but his shooting with that wrist injury to start last season was atrocious. Yeah. He had one good game, but then go on a slump for about four or five. So. Yeah, that is true. For $1? Yeah, you take that every day. Yeah, you take that chance for $1, for sure. Dennis Schroeder. Three bucks, a one dollar flyer. By all means, take it. I'm not spending any more than that on a guy that I'm not really convinced is going to play, yeah, you know, thirty plus or anything in Boston. Uh, you know, I, I don't see it from. I, I don't. I don't like him that much as a player. Um. All right. We're a couple of how many picks we got left? About twenty picks left. Um, and not much money left for most people. Chris Duarte. Yeah, no. Nah. I don't think that's worth it. There's so many guys out there. Yeah, we were talking about him on, on our podcast uh, okay. last on last Friday. And I aired a grievance with uh, Yahoo about not giving him point guard eligibility. He's a point guard in college. That's what he, yeah, he played both on and off the ball at Oregon, yeah. so... Hopefully they change that because I think that could help him a little bit in terms of potential fantasy value without TJ Warren. That being said, I think he's more of a waiver wire guy than a, a draftable player. Yeah, I, I agree. Like I, I think Justin Holiday is going to be the guy that steps in for TJ Warren, not Duarte. Yeah. But it's not to say that he he couldn't step in. Mm-hmm. All right. Apparently my camera is never coming back, so he's going to have to deal with my voice only. All right. <laughs> Will Barton goes for two bucks. I'll we'll have to figure it out before we end the show, but I don't know why this has just happened. It's just given up on me completely. I will figure it out. I hope. Um, all right, let's get Reggie Jackson for two bucks. Yep, fine. Starting point guard for the Clippers, most likely. Um, yeah, he was really good in the playoffs. Whether he can continue that level of shooting remains to be seen, but he was really, really good. Hey, this Fairhavar guy's got five spots left with six bucks. That's a lot of one dollar players. What's his team? <laughs> Mitchell Van Vliet, McCullum Healed, Zion, Pokyashevsky, Towns, and Adams. So he's got five one dollar players left to fill in, and he's already and, he, and he's already got Pokyashevsky and Adams. That is a very top heavy squad. Mm-hmm. It's getting close to my nomination, but I'm running that risk. Whoever I throw out there is going to get uh, taken away by someone like Ivan, who's got. Thirteen dollars left, and he's throw out Josh Giddy. Um, yeah, I yes, Giddy is someone who I'd be very happy to end up with, and I'm sure somebody, maybe you, considering you got two dollars left, and you're just goading me into this, will uh, yeah. will take it. I'll see. leave him alone. Nah, I have Jared. another guy in my queue. Nah, Jared, the bastard, nah. took him <laughs> for two bucks. That's all right. He would have been a good pick. He was at the top of my queue of guys to throw out there. It's it's the risky run at this point, though, when you're down to these last little bits of money left. Exactly. Jared's time to bid on someone. Yeti finished their squad with $12 left over. <laughs> I don't mind leaving four or five bucks. Anything over 10 is too much. 
I, I don't mind yeah. leaving a couple. I'm not like you have to spend every single dollar. That's not that. That's not that important to me. If you're leaving over ten, it's you've probably mismanaged something somewhere. Unless you just got everyone at gigantic steals, which is possible. Yeah. Dylan Brooks for a dollar. That's a good pick as well. No one sniped Jared's pick, but they take mine. So Jared has got. I'm going to roll the dice here. Okay, let's see. What do you got, Terrence? Man, wow. Okay. He was another guy, really good in the playoffs. Um, do they start him or Batum or Bledsoe? See, I think so, just because I'm not really sure how Batum and Marcus Morris would fit together in the starting lineup. Yeah, they didn't do that much last that's year. Why, did they? Yeah, that's why I think Man's going to be that guy. Um, is he a bit of a risk in a points league? Sure, but with Kawhi out, probably for the whole regular season, I think it's a risk worth worth taping, taking at this point. Yep. And with that, my team is full. Oh, you're so. done. Yeah. Congratulations. Do you want to run through your team then? Just tell us who's on your squad. Yep. My team, yeah, LaMelo Ball. For, should I tell them the, the dollar values too? Yeah, go ahead. All right, LaMelo for $30, um, Devin Booker for 27 Terry Rozier for 15 Chris Middleton for 18 Chris Stapps Porzingis for 26 Miles Turner for 12 Nikola Vucevic for 37 Pascal Siakam for 13 Kemba Walker for 10 Mo Bamba for 3 Jordan Clarkson for 3 Nicholas Claxton for 4 And Terrence Mann for 2. Okay, so a couple of flyers there at the end. Yeah, some real value on that yes. Siakam pick, especially if he's back in November. It's going to work out pretty mm-hmm. well. Um, yeah, so pretty. I think you should be pretty happy with how that uh, how that team looks at this point. Um, yeah. I didn't get any superstars, but I like I like how this roster is made up here. Tim Hardaway just went for a dollar. That's great value for a dollar for Timmy. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Chumra Kiki goes for a dollar. Which I don't mind. I'm a little bit worried about Schumer, especially in a points league format. He's not the best in that scenario. Um, yeah. To tell you who's around, oh, well, your, your team's full, so I can wait, tell wait, you. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, this guy's taking the piss. I don't know what he's doing. Absolutely ridiculous. He bids on Springer, but Tyrese Maxey's still on the board. Yeah. Nah. Hey. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Raf's uh, laughing because in the chat I just said I'm not sure what the fuck you're doing um, <laughs> I was going to tell you who I, I was, I was going to be careful about who I told you I was going to go for here but this guy's still on the board DeAndre Hunter if I can snag yeah, him that's... for a dollar I'm really yeah. happy I don't think I will like when Jaden Springer and Marcus Morris are coming off the board uh, if I can get uh, DeAndre for a dollar I'll be very very pleased with that yeah. he's in, going into my queue Aaron Gordon is an option for me as well he wasn't very good last year, but for a dollar in a points league, he works out pretty well. I think he'll be better too. Now he's familiar uh, with his teammates in the system. So. Agree. Yeah. And he's healthy. That's the other thing. The problem I'm going to have here, right, is this... Oh, no, I'm not, hopefully. I was going to say this Ivan bloke is going to be able to outbid me, but he's only got... He nominates before me. And he's only got one spot left. So if he nominates and then takes that player, but Grant can outbid me for Hunter. For... Okay. And so can Mumba. And I reckon they will. But why have they left it so long? Oh, Aaron Gordon goes for a dollar. So I could have snagged Aaron Gordon through. Awesome. My turn to nominate. Isaiah Roby goes for 12. That guy just rounded out his squad. All right, let's try DeAndre Hunter. It's not going to work, but let's just try it. Which one of these dickheads is going to throw him out there and annoy me? Grant is for sure here. One dollar for DeAndre Hunter works really well for me. Be happy if you all left him alone. Oh, don't tell me it's gonna. Oh no! What are you doing? Right at the buzzer. <laughs> Far out. Nah, that was a, that was gonna be a. Yeah. Come on, Grant, bid him up. You've got the money. You got forty waiting for with your four bucks. Don't Hunter for two dollars. What an annoying, annoying situation that is. All right, back to the old drawing board. Not that. How many players have we got left to pick? Ten. And I'm going to get two of them. Okay. Al Horford for a dollar. That is going to work for me, okay. Lou Dort. Yep. Bobby Portis is up for a dollar here. We're getting very close to the stage where 
Actually, we're not. We're almost, it should be there where no one can actually outbid someone. That's just Mumba now. With he's going to get his last play here, but he, it's only him. Yeah. All right. So Zubats goes for a dollar. So it's just snake draft format now, basically for the rest here. So Zubats yeah. goes. So I can get who I want. I should have man. I should have waited for Hunter to get to this spot. Not not that he necessarily would have, but. All right. So. Oh, this bloke's still around. Malik Beasley's still there. How do you feel about Jaden McDaniels since you mentioned Minnesota? Um, I, what did Beasley just go? Oh, he did. Um, I I don't like him as much in a points league. Yeah. Um, I just don't know how he's going to get any usage. Like, when's he going to touch the ball? And he's not this huge, huge shot blocker or anything like that. I just took um. Lou Dort and I want to, I'm going to take Tyler Hero Old Depot is going to be out for a while Hero is going to get some minutes off the bench there you go Alperen Shingun went for a dollar as well so that's my team is that is that the draft done oh, we've got a couple of picks left two two picks left All right, so I got Hero and Dort with my last two okay just one dollar guys they're disposable players someone's taking their time for this yeah, last selection I don't really trust Dort personally. I know he had some big games second oh, half last season, but the efficiency. It's terrible. Or lack thereof, yeah. Seth Curry goes and we're done. That was the last pick. Raf. There you go. I've kept you long enough. Thank you for being a part of this mock draft. Um, interestingly, on my Basketball Monster standings projections, Grant's team ended up at one, Ferris at two, mm-hmm. mine at three, you at four. So that's how uh, that's how the projections ended up there. Who knows if that's All accurate right. or not? But that, that's how my projections see the teams going. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm happy. I really appreciate you having me on. No worries, man. I'm going to try and get this camera fixed so people can see my face as I say goodbye, and uh, I'll say goodbye to you right now. Thank you. All right, take care. Thanks. All right, we are back in business, and now my camera has decided to work for whatever reason. the uh, The draft is done. My team looks as follows. Jar Morant, Jalen Brown. Let's, let's go through their prices. 27 bucks for Jar, 28 for Jalen Brown. Let's hit the uh, let's hit the sounder. JB, you've done it again. 24 for DeJounte Murray, 22 for Toby Harris, 21 for DeAndre Ayton. So five $20 guys. Um, $19 for Derek White. I didn't love it. Maximum Derek. 14 for Gordon Haywood, 14 for Jaron Jackson. I love both of those. 10 bucks for uh, the Flame and Galar. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Eight bucks for Jalen Green. Eleven for PJ Washington Jr. I went higher on that one. I just wanted to fill out that last spot. And then my last two $1 guys, Tyler Hero and Lou Dort. That does it for this auction salary cap mock draft. If you are still watching, there is a place up for grabs in the... Um, in the uh, Red Rock, well, not Red Rock, that's old school, the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Championship, the 11 category head to head draft only, 27 round, $50 entry, $600 winner take all uh, draft. There is a spot up for grabs. And the way that you get into that draft is by tweeting at me, at Red Rock underscore B ball. You tweet at me the following word, and I'll pick someone at random who is still listening. The word that you need to tweet at me is. And it must be spelt correctly, mannequin. You must tweet the word mannequin to me and I will pick someone in the next 24 hours to get that spot for a draft, which is the Thursday before the beginning of the NBA season as an 8 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. draft. Um, yeah, tweet mannequin. Guys, I'm tired. We are done here. Follow me, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, YouTube, thumbs up, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.